Oh. And he was out for a quick second. And then I, I don't know where why I don't I don't know where number signed. I, I don't know. I thought you was ready for the convo. My bad. Not when yeah. I'm here. I'm sorry. I was talking CMG. I don't know where so, Namir signed. I mean, I'm looking at CMG and well, let me let me go into it because that that just looks like Black Youngster, Moneybag Yo, Black Boy JB, 42 Doug, ESTG, uh, Glorilla Mozzie. And, I, and the, the Mozzie one is horrible. I don't know why Mozzie signed there. Out of all the people he gets signed to, he signs with, with Yo Gotti. It's crazy. But then he gets arrested. Some of these niggas is jail. Because I know 42 yeah, I'm about Doug, to say, like, 42 Doug with the jail. jail. Yeah, 42 Doug with the jail. Black Boy JB, just it was the Drake co sign. Black Youngster, I mean, the nigga, I'm not going to say his music was fire, but the nigga first was viral. First. And the nigga can Play get... that Hawks clip B S O L Z. This is crazy. I guess. But. Black Youngster was definitely a, a, a name that got niggas' attention, not not necessarily for music, but for antics, and even that fell off. I, I don't know. And he like little bro, he's like little bro to fucking yo got it. That's just weird. I, what's the case here? Because I you're not he doesn't. It. Mozzie doesn't fit the CMG look. I mean, if you don't believe it, you don't believe it. Cool. I'm just saying. No, I, I'm just you, you brought up you brought up Glorilla. People. You brought up Glorilla, and she was on tour, and now she's back to making music. And it seems like she has a song that that's gonna work. That I think that uh, the song we just played is gonna work. Um, do you re- do you really think it's gonna work? Yeah, I think the girls like that song. Yeah, actually, I know the girls like that song. You said the girls didn't like the fucking sexy red and drink shit, and the girls like that. No, they don't. They do? <laughs> no, they shit don't. from what I the girls I've seen, yeah, the, from what I've been hearing on these East streets, the girls fuck with it. I don't know. No, the I TikTok think TikTok girlies doing the trend that don't count. I was about to say, I, th- I think they think it'll. The tr- okay. They think they think oh. they think it'll get views, but every time that I've been out recently, that song does not go anywhere. Okay. And you know, I don't, I don't get out that much. So you, if you tell me, it's, I just don't hear it nowhere. I feel like Big Boogie could. I feel like Big Boogie could be way bigger than what he is. Maybe that's just me being oh, in the south. God. I feel like Big Boogie, he should be bigger. I don't know who the fuck Lil Papa is, so maybe that's the next up and coming guy. I don't know. What? I'm looking at the label myself. I didn't know Big Boogie was on a label, but it makes sense. The nigga had a fire song and then disappeared. I don't what know. Is, who, who is Big Boogie? What's Big, Big Boogie's Boogie. viral? He, I, I literally just heard one of his songs on the radio one day, and I was like, oh, this shit's called But what's his viral what's song? Is that a woman? I forget the name. I don't know. Big Boogie's a dude. Uh, How does I don't it even go? know the name of the song. How does it go? I only know his ad lib. Big Boog. That shit's cool. <laughs> okay, so yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> So it sounds like if you want to if you want to hate on money bag, yo, that's fine. You just, I'm you not hate on, it has nothing to do with money bag, yo. I mean, it has money all bag, to do yo, with yo, yo Gotti. Yo Gotti. money bag, yo. Was money bag? Did it not feel like money? And let me ask: Is money bag yo on tour too? Is all CMG on tour? No, nah, but he's been dropping music. Has it been as hot as it was before? I don't even feel like the push for money bag yo is like it used to be. Because marketing um, is everything too. Marketing behind a lot of these niggas' music is everything too. So I, I, mean, I don't feel like the push behind money bag yo is as big as it used to be or should be. I, I guess I mean I can't debate what you think should be. That's just a personal feeling. But do you okay? Okay. Do you feel money? Ba- the push for money back yo has been what it was. Let's say a year or two ago. Um. Music no, but I don't. I don't. I don't think it's the same. He's the same face, but I also don't think that niggas listen to him. I think that the theory that I had about like Memphis rap, not Memphis rappers, but mm-hmm. people's uh, uh, rappery. Like y'all don't fuck with rappers from different areas, like in in reality, for real, for real. Like people don't. I, that's the way I yeah. feel. They just like that that's one true. song or whatever. But in twenty twenty one, he dropped time today, and then he took. Well, he's dropping yeah. a, a album this year. So what? A, a two but years even between with, these projects. Even with that last album he dropped, I didn't. Again, I don't feel like the push for that album was because that was a good album. I like that album. album, album them. I still don't think the push for the album was like it, marketing it peaked, wise. It peaked number one on the charts. Who's album? Money back? Yes. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know. I didn't know the numbers like that. I didn't know the numbers was doing like that. It did not seem like people was talking about that money. The last one? I, yeah, I did not think people not. was talking about that album like that. Like that album. I, I could be wrong. That I, just, I like good. it too. Mm-hmm. I, I, I liked it. I didn't think enough people were talking about it. I didn't, I didn't think the push was behind it. I could be wrong. I, I was wrong about that then. That's on me. Do you have I another just, case for Yo Gotti? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, and I need to see when he dropped because I, I don't want to say ESTG is on the same trajectory, even though I mean I don't feel like it's been that long since ESTG was really being talked about. Nigga say I'm a casual, eat my ass, nigga, with Max Sauce. Anyway, I'm sorry I could admit when I'm wrong about one rapper. Y'all still can't tell me I'm wrong about Black Youngster, Mozzie, or fucking Glorilla. So eat my fucking dick. But even 
even with even with uh god and this is a crazy way to start the pod even with glorilla like i don't i guess you just people not you but people just have different expectations for what mm-hmm. an artist is supposed to be uh what they're supposed to do or whatever the like i i really don't know what i'm supposed to be expected from glorilla she's done a lot since what was that 20 we're talking about a year ago two years ago we're not even talking about that long time ago yeah, give her time, man. She's like a the Lamella ball of this game. She just needs a little bit more time. No, everybody just everybody just isn't supposed to be like this as big as uh, uh, people want them to be. Um, tomorrow came out in twenty twenty two. What are we talking about? It's about to be twenty. Okay, we're about to say it's about to be twenty twenty four. What are we talking? What are we talking about? So she can't get a year to do all these other things, develop as an artist, really again, run that song into a ground, uh, into the again, ground. Again, I don't oh, think in your first. I don't think in your first year, especially going when you go big, your first year, your first year being huge. I don't think there should be a time period where you're taking, I don't know, almost a year of dro- not dropping music, almost a year of not dropping. But music. if you're, but if you're being featured on stuff, if you're acting, if you're in brand deals, if you're in other people's stuff, if you're doing other things. How is that not like beneficial to you as an entity? I'm sorry, I was reading the comment. What did you say? If you're not, if you're doing other things, acting, being on TV shows, mm-hmm. commercials, branding mm-hmm. yourself, if mm-hmm. you're doing mm-hmm. all these other mm-hmm. things, how is that mm-hmm. not beneficial mm-hmm. to you as an artist? Where the music at? Because you're an artist. Yeah, I mean, she's dropping, still the music, but she's still, well, but you. she's still dropping it. She's still dropping music. It's just not album type music. It's just she's dropping music though. How many songs has he dropped in 2023? Because I want to say she recently started dropping. Right? Uh, Within like the last two months? Right? Or am I bugging? One, two, three, four. What's the name of that song? What's the name of that song? Big Booty Hoes? Um, it's not called Big Booty Hoes. It's called Pop It. Five. She has a like she has five, six songs in 2023. That's a decent amount of songs. I ain't gonna lie. Is Especially it? for somebody that's not doing an album. Like her intentions aren't I, to do it. Hey, hey, hey! I could be hating on me, on your body. <laughs> yeah, that's I what it is. I, it just that, that doesn't seem like a lot to me in a year. I don't know six. Songs so, a year so you want her to do an album a year, basically? I wouldn't even say an album. A year. You don't even have to do an album a year. I, I think if you're not going to do an album and you're doing all these other things, that's fine. You can still consistently drop, especially being a new artist. I don't see why being a new artist you just slow up on the releases. That's kind of wild. But she hasn't slowed up on. EP? Okay, how many songs did she drop between 21 and 22? Compared uh, to twenty twenty three, because if it's a, a, a starch difference, then it's like <laughs> all right, boom. Right but if you if you go to if you go to twenty twenty two and tell me she dropped eight songs, <laughs> I'm like all right, nigga, I'm hating. I, hey, you got me. Well, I, and, and she I, dropped and I hella songs. Do you I'm like Lorilla? Let's start there. Do you like her? I do. I do like Lorilla, okay. and I feel okay, like. Okay, okay. And again, I just want to see where intentions lie. This, this could be. This could be because my <laughs> expectations for Glorilla is so high, and I think she's like Great you transition. know that <laughs> that woman star. So maybe I'm just you know I have such high expectations. That I'm, you know, put on a pedestal. Maybe she's just not meant to be on. Like other people mm. up here on this panel. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. This get is where the clip starts. You can't, you can't get out of it. You can't get out of it, <laughs> nasty King. man. You're just, you were wrong. You're just wrong about, I mean, and not even wrong. I just, I think that the internet has adopted you. How did you do that? <laughs> the internet has indoctrinated you to believe that Glorilla is supposed to be. Somebody big, and honestly, she's still big. Niggas just hate her because sexy red. Like yeah, niggas act like two people go. can't be at the same time. That like, what true. are we saying, bro? Oh, anyway, anyway, Jesus Christ, that the hate fest for Yo Gotti is done. Thank Fuck God. Fuck that big head, nigga. Pause. <sighs> um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Let's Keep the Buck podcast, the only podcast we do things differently. We like to keep it fresh here. We like to argue. We like to start e beef. Ain't that right, B Souls? Huh? Huh? Beef Souls? Huh? Oh my God. He's on fire! I didn't start nothing, bro. Nah, nah. go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, did, man. Go ahead. That's the condescending right there. Crazy. Let me go. Jesus. Let me go ahead and punch <laughs> your ticket. Oh shit! For the e beef, saying, bro. How you doing today? I'm doing good, bro. Just got off a stream. Hundred subs. Oh my God. Hundred subs. Hey. Yeah, I've been I've been doing good, man. Straight. Uh-huh. Yeah, I bet. Okay, punch your ticket today. Uh, Damo, how you doing today? I've been good, man. Uh, you know, same old, same old daily life. Trying to get that grind going. 
hating on niggas, like yo goddy bum ass type shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm good. Not gonna lie. It's a lot going on. Uh, I'm finally rested up, even though my back hurts. We are streaming tonight. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Tight shit. Oh, back on last stream. The 31st of October. Damn. Yeah, Isn't no. That much out of you. It did, and then life hit me too. I ain't going to go. That's right. We might have to do an MVP therapy session for real, for real. Um, if you're new to this, you want to be true to this, make sure you hit that subscribe button, man. Make sure that join button on our various platforms. Hit the Discord. You know, hit the Twitter. Hit the Twitch. Hit the Instagram. Hit it from the back. I don't know. Hit it everywhere type shit. I don't know. <laughs> hit it everywhere. Uh, make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. We haven't told people that in a long time. We haven't told people that in a long time. Um, and then last but certainly not least... TTS is on. Uh, send us direct messages. We'll read them. We're trying to interact with the community. The Q&A link will be up soon. We want to hear what you got to say. Mm. Speaking, of hearing, speaking of hearing what we got to say, can we say that Vic is a bus now? Here we go. Why can is we, he a bus? Can we, we go. Go ahead, can we go ahead and say Vic is a bus now? Well, I gotta hear this because I, I seen you at at me and Souls, and you did a little space. I heard about it. I didn't. I, I wasn't there. But L space, by the way, Dama. L space. I heard, I L -space. heard about it. I heard about I it. I've seen the reactions. I, I, I seen the reactions it. to it. I was like, like, this is bad. But let me hear it. What, what makes him a bust? I I heard about it. Now I will say this. I will say this. I have seen, like, there might be two Spurs games that I have not seen. Right, I think there's two Spurs games that I haven't seen. I mean, I, well, I'm speaking for me. I don't know how many. Have y'all how many Spurs games have y'all watched? I've seen in full, probably like handful. three, four. Yeah, yeah, and they they've only had like seven, eight. I've seen majority of Spurs so far. I can say that. I've, yeah, I've yeah, yeah. I, the of only highlights of last night. The only game that I did not watch was this past one, mm -hmm. and then I didn't watch uh, the 38 point game. Yeah, I didn't uh, see the 38 special. I'm mad about that. Yeah, but. I think we were. I thought we were streaming. I thought we were I saw it halfway, I think. I saw it halfway. Don't watch the whole thing. But so we got we got our guy. Um, and I know chat because they don't watch ball, they're not gonna know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm talking about next generation Tim Duncan. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Got a guy, yeah. Yeah, y'all didn't y'all didn't. That. Oh, well, that's what it was his rookie year. Mitchell Robinson coming out saying He's ready to defend Victor Wimbanyama. I'm going to play him just like he's one of uh, those, like, Kristaps Porzingis kind of players. Who else plays like that? Bobo? Bo? Just got a mix of them two together. Kind of got a feel for how it should go. Right. And I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to lie. I mean, how y'all feel about that? How y'all feel about that? The Mitchell Robinson comment? And I'm Mitchell Robinson. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm surprised and, he clamped them because Kristaps was giving him fits opening night. So, <laughs> <laughs> crazy fits. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, Wimby still needs to learn how to play these defenders in the NBA. I've said this on Players' Choice and was screamed at by guys. But, yeah, it's not going to be a walk in the park. I don't know why anybody thought Wimby was just going to come over and straight dominate. Now, I knew he was going to look good, which he looked he's good. No, he's no Luca, but, right? I mean, look at it come over and straight dominate, but well, I mean, twenty one on shitty efficiency is dominating you. I mean, the bar is low, I guess. But by by these seven games, well, Luca was averaging Luca was averaging forty in his oh, first seven what? games. What? Yes. Yeah. Pull it. Up. Was he? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm about to say, hey, I, I can fact check real quick. Let me. Damn, we can't lie on this podcast no more. Oh, what okay. I'm about to say this. Uh, what, no happened? Way. what happened? <laughs> what happened? To, what happened, what to, happened to the game I love? What happened to the non fact <laughs> checking? No, let, the, mean, let the chat check me, not y'all niggas. Nah, what are we doing? Crazy. Nah, nah. I'm We're checking prepared. everything up here. Yeah, facts. Uh, no, but seriously, I don't. I don't know who. That, well, I was telling niggas all goddamn summer, temper the expectations or place expectations. That you see or you have, like watch him and come up with your expectations. Don't listen to Chris Bassard. Don't listen to fucking Najee Himes, blank reporter or whatever it is, or analyst. Nigga, watch him play and then you decide what you think he is. But no one wanted to do that. Everybody wanted to listen to whoever said it. And now but we're you, here. But you know, when I say the same things, Damo, they say that I'm hating. Let's go ahead and get into the numbers. 
Victor Busbinyama, uh, 30 minutes, four for 14, 28.6 from the field, uh, over oh four from three. Oh my God. Six for six from the line. He's going he's gonna to hit these from the line. Nine boards, two assists, uh, one block, three turnovers, 14 points, a negative 25. I'm going a, I'm to a keep it 100 with y'all. Mm. A lot mm. of that was in the fourth quarter, if I'm not mistaken. Third and fourth quarter. Because when I looked at it at halftime, yeah, third third and fourth quarter is when he got his mix. When I looked at it at halftime, the nigga had zero points. Yeah, I, mm. I, saw, um, I saw the buckets. A lot of it did come from the fourth quarter. And they were getting beat. They were getting beat. It's a lot of his games too. Like he starts off oh, very shit, slow, and then in the fourth quarter, he just kind of turns it up. This is disgusting. Oh fuck! Oh, hey! No, and he's lagging too. You're frozen too. It, it, this is nasty. I sound weird. Oh fuck! I'm in the period. Oh shit! Stop! It's not. And in eight games, he's he's frozen. What? 19 a game, nine boards, which I ain't gonna lie, that's more boards than I thought he would average. Um, coming in 19 points, nine boards, two blocks, which is pretty good. Shoot 44 from the field and sub 30 from three. I mean, he's a jump shooting 7 4 guy. I mean, I I don't know. I, I will say some of the slights I have with Wimby aren't even his fault. I don't think he's being put. He's being put in a good situation. I don't want to make it seem like coaching is everything going wrong with him. He's being put in a good situation, allowed to be himself and play the way he wants versus being trained to be a big that he's not. He's allowed to play like he wants. Pop is on terror's watch. I don't get Jeremy Sochan at point guard. I don't understand it. I don't get some of the coaching decisions around the Spurs. I've been told, oh, they're, they're tanking so they can just do whatever. I don't believe that is a thing you should do. When you have a generational player, I think you put your best foot forward when you get them and go from there. But experiment with players is crazy. I and I feel I like think, that's a hindrance to him. I think they're trying to make either make Jeremy Sochan something he's not, or let's get let's get them, let's, let's get that that film looking good. So around trade deadline, get your ass up out of here, my nigga. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna try to convince you. He's, he's hey, he's got Kawhi levels of potential. He needs to be tapped in and. Not gonna lie, you seen it. You seen point Sochan. Mm, mm, Sochan right? isn't even ass. I, I'm seeing somebody say Sochan is ass. He's not ass. He's just not a point guard. I don't know. I don't. I just don't yeah. think. <laughs> I think Yo, that that was crazy, bro. Misused. I don't even think they're running enough plays for Wemby. To be honest with you, like a lot of his buckets is just offensive rebounds. Man, call him garbage. Pots. Call him a bust. <laughs> I don't want to hear He's not a bust. He's not a bust. What what the fuck do you want to hear from? He's not a bust. Cause, cause when he had a phenomenal and game, is, is is a bust. When he had a phenomenal game, mm-hmm. everybody was ready to come for my head. Oh, no pause, play. But today, when he has a bad game, <laughs> it's just one game. Yeah. Cause I'm gonna be honest, bro. You have the highest standards for Wimby compared to everyone else up here, which is kind of ironic, cause that kind of go I against don't. your points. All right. That's why every single time he has an ass game, now you going crazy. That sounds like a motherfucker with high expectations. No, I'm, a, I'm only doing that in response to other people on my head. If niggas wasn't on my head, I wouldn't be on their head. Now ah, we going head for head. It's not even, oh, but it's not even the fact of Omar having high expectations. He was just overly critical when becoming in. Like he was just didn't. I, I want. I, maybe I'm wrong, but Omar didn't believe the hype. As much as everybody else, am I wrong? What did what did I say? What did I say? What do I? I just, I, I just feel like when I when I was talking <laughs> I about how Shaq, oh I'm not saying that you said that. I'm not gonna put words in your mouth. Yeah, but thank I do you. Think, I do think that your expectation. I'm not gonna say expectations were lower, but you just weren't sold on the hype like everyone else was. When I was sitting up here with Ant saying, "Hey, yo, when Shaq won't be coming to the league and they're the generational bigs and changing the game," he was like, "All right, nigga, I don't know about that." That was you. Specifically, my- specifically about Chet more than anything. And my my sentiments have been consistent in this specific point. My sentiments are, hey, when they get that big, I'm going to skip on them. I just, I personally, the injury risk is too high for me. I've seen it too many times. If I miss out on a guy like that, it is what it is. But when you were saying, oh, Chet, Chet and Wimby were about to change the game, me, Chet, I, you hold off on. I didn't have too many, I didn't have like super strong sentiments on Wimby. I was taking Scoot over him though. Mm-hmm. I was thinking and that's somebody, sure. and, I, and I wasn't going to bring it up now, but I was going to ask where's his energy for Scoot's bad games or when, where's his energy for Scoot in terms I, of I have the same being thing. critical. 
And the difference is, the difference is we've watched Wimby's games to understand what's going on. We haven't watched any Portland games to understand what's going on. Now, if somebody game, in the chat. We didn't watch the we didn't watch the Wimby game together. So, but we're here today. What are you talking about? Did we watch the Wimby game? I didn't watch the didn't Wimby game. Did you just say you didn't watch the last game one more? Oh, no. I'm saying we've watched Wimby games enough for me to have sentiments about him. You're saying where's the smoke for Chet when, I mean, not Chet, Scoot when he plays bad. I haven't seen anything. I know the box score is bad. I don't know why it's bad. So I can't say anything. He's playing bad. I don't know why, though. Okay. And... He's missing open shots. A lot of those shots last night were good shots. He was just missing them. I don't know. I haven't. I'm telling you, I haven't seen it. I, I, and I'm, I'm telling really you, as a person who I at least watch every single shot that he took on my stream, a lot of those shots were good shots. They were open shots. He just didn't make them. Okay. And I, and I understand your injury concern with Chet, but in terms of his abilities, can you not admit that? And maybe I was ODing by saying, "Oh my God, generational changing the game." The motherfucker is phenomenal for that age. Yeah. Can we not admit that? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. That's fine. Maybe I was going overboard saying he's going to change the game because we've seen skill big before. But no, and he's still. You know what's crazy? Talk. He still. He still can, and that can be the case. I'm just saying for me with injuries, and I've maintained this about any big. I'm never doing. I'm never going that big. I just the injury thing to me is just. I'm gonna be messed. I'm gonna be fucked up if I end up with like Greg Oden on my hand and I missed out on like KD. And I, it's because I've seen those bigs before. Once they get that tall, once they get that big weight wise, just the lower body issues that they have mm-hmm. is. Uh. But who's the guy in that draft where you can say like, okay, I'm gonna miss out on Chet because I can. Who's the who do you feel was a KD that OKC took Chet ahead of in that draft? Because I want to say that was the Scotty Barnes draft, right? The Chet draft that was. Yeah. Um... That was uh, what's his was name? Paolo. Paolo no, went one right, and then I don't know. No, Jay Dub was also in that draft, and they got him. So that, that's that was not... the twenty twenty two NBA two, draft. Yeah, twenty two draft. So we're talking about guys like okay. So after chat, we got Jabari Smith, who again, offensive game came. A, a oh long no, way. no, I remember. I remember our conversation. I remember our conversation. It was about this was before anybody had got drafted, so it was about who was going to be the better player. And you were leaning more towards Chet, and I was leaning more towards Paolo. Towards Paolo. Mm-hmm. So it didn't necessarily – the order hadn't even been – made. like the picks hadn't been made yet. So it's not like, a, okay, who was next in line? I was saying Paolo mm-hmm. over Chet, and these were the reasons why. Mm-hmm. That's why. Fair. The nigga's a bust, man. What are we talking about? Why can't we I say that? Why is he a bust? What makes him a bust? I, I, still, I still don't get it because even in those like crazy conversations, the conversation has always been about what he can be at his peak and his career. Can and, be. And, no, I don't. I don't know if that's the case. Niggas is talking about rookie years. I think. I think. And it's. I'm. I'm being hyperbolic when I say bust and all that stuff like that. What I'm. What I'm saying is, I want people to keep it consistent. If you're going to jump for joy, overreact, put Omar on the cross when he has a good game, when he has a bad game, do not hide. Come to the fourth. That's fair. I ain't doing nothing about tots and NPCs, but what I will tell you is Vic is Vic is fine. What are we doing? I mean, he's literally having like the the rookie season I expect out of him, where some games are awful, some games are just bad, and in some games he's fucking amazing. Even in his debut, the stats ain't going to tell you, but the shit, we all saw his debut. We saw how whenever he got the ball, it was like that. And for whatever reason, he was just highly conservative. And then the Spurs showed to be a young team. Dallas, fuck Dallas specifically. Luka and Kyrie looked like all NBA defenders in the clutch because they just took advantage of the um, youth and mistakes of the Spurs team and got that dub. The other three games, I mean, they're not even that hard to find statistically. You could go to Phoenix. You could go to the other game if – you, you could go to either game in Phoenix. I think y'all dragged that first game in Phoenix, me personally. You, but definitely the 38 bomb. You could go to the following game in Houston. And I even think in Toronto he was fine. Big is def- definitely not consistent enough to be, like, great, great, great as of today. But I've already had the notion that Victor Wibanyama as a talent today is somewhat underrated. He's, he's just an up-and-down player with fantastic flashes. And, yeah, he can have some bad games as well. I will say Omar is not lying. It was mo- it, it and again I'm coming from the aspect of being on player's choice arguing basketball every day. It is motherfuckers who are out here just talking about how rookie year when how good rookie year Wimby will be, how good rookie Wim- rookie year Wimby is. That is a conversation being had. And I will say the same thing. Y'all niggas need to temper your expectations of trying to say he's gonna I 
uh, now ticket i will name you here ticket was a motherfucker saying he's gonna have the greatest rookie year we've ever seen or along those lines he has to be the greatest rookie we've ever seen which is insane i don't know what <laughs> what like that's just an unnecessary expectation in my opinion to have the greatest rookie year we, like what does that even mean but like what does that mean in the grand scheme of things if he has the worst sophomore year ever what are you gonna say then like i don't i, I don't get what the expectation is being the greatest rookie but no, that's right Motherfuckers are rookie. talking about motherfuckers are genuinely talking about how great rookie year Wimby is off rip, not even just what he will be. So I, I just need to see more people actually coming out and having these expectations that y'all are talking about. Because another one who um who had high expectations was Brian Windhorse, right? Y'all said that? Brian Windhorse, Damo just said ticket. I mean, I, I can't think of any other people, but yeah, as, how many as it, Wimby conversations are you seeing? I think those a conversations decent amount. exist, but I don't think it's the overwhelming majority. I think. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I think an overwhelming did majority, miss... even on the high end, is averaging 22, 23 points a game. Yeah. I don't think so you so you miss are... so you miss the whole Wimby uh, rookie year Kareem conversations. And... No, I didn't no. miss them. I heard it. I heard that conversation, but it was, it was a dumb conversation. I don't think it was a common conversation. I don't think most people who had that conversation were like, "Oh yeah, facts." I think most was it was it like one tweet with 10k likes or some shit? No, no these are conversations. Yeah. But there are general conversations that are being had about this in basketball circles or conversations in these communities or whatever. People who are diehard, either casuals or basketball fans. They're having this conversation. There's a reason the Spurs have 19 national televised games this year compared to the previous two number one picks having four and what six uh, respectively, and other guys having five and seven. But Wimby gets 19. It's because people are literally giving him the craziest expectations rookie year. Not even oh, see what he is down the road. I know there's hype behind him, but people are literally thinking from frame one he's going to be this crazy dog of a player out the gate. I guess it just depends on what you mean by crazy because to me, like, 22, 23 points a game in your rookie year as a 19-year-old is still crazy expectations, and he's not far off of that. But if we're talking about the 27, 28 points a game, now that's crazy. I think that's extreme, but that's what I'm talking about. That's an extreme. Are a majority of people saying that, or are we just harping on a loud minority at this point? I also think that uh, the reason he got the games is because he's fucking 7'4". We never seen that shit. Or uh, well, y'all know how y'all be, but I don't think we've ever seen that shit. And um, on top of that, he had a lot of uh expectations to, in terms of what his future could be, and he had a lot of hype. So a lot of people gonna want to see rookie season fit, in my personal opinion. But I I hear you on uh people talking about rookie fit because they are talking about them. I just don't think it's the majority. I think majority of people are like you know not stupid. And I did talk about the NBA community. But man, I, I think when it comes to Victor Wembanyama and a lot of rookies, the NBA community is more on the reservative side than not. Well, then how do you how do you feel about tickets, Sage? Ticket. <laughs> All right, so I caught up on the EB. What was it? Two days ago. LB. First of all, Pause. called my dog. Called my dog Fat Mars. Next time, call him Jupiter. It was right there. You fumbled the joke. Easy, easy layup. Second. I'm gonna be honest, bro. I rewatched the video offline, watched watched a snippet of it sped up on stream. I was like, "What did we do? This, this shit, this shit just ass, bro." But this EB shit ain't real, and I've been saying that time in and time out. I mean, I don't know if this is like an invitation. I don't know if this is like so. Put it read. out there. I don't know what it is, but. You, you ain't gotta do my dog like that. <laughs> I ain't gonna oh, lie. Wow. You ain't gotta do my dog like that. And on top of it, I I feel like I was talking more to him. Now I'm really not gonna get too nasty. I feel like we all know why B Souls was a bigger target than TSO Sage. Don't need to explain that. But end of the day, eh, weak ass beef. Cause it weren't even like Soul saying anything disrespectful. Like there's been people that come up here and say more disrespectful shit to me. Um, there's been chats more disrespectful, probably in the stream. That nigga soul s- said I disagree with you once, and then it got mad. It is what it is, though. You can't disagree really... with ticket, man. You disagree with ticket, you're, you're hating on it. But them. that's the problem. You agreed with ticket. <laughs> that's the problem. The there was one take problem. where I fully agreed there was with one, ticket. There was one <laughs> take where he <laughs> said verbatim, I agree with ticket. It, it, it's, it is what it is. But let me ask you being real if he clapped back at it, chat. Mm-hmm. Don't hit me up because I promise you, from the bottom of my balls, this ain't a nigga that I don't give. I, I, I won't care. Like please, like when Souls told me to watch this shit on stream, it's it's clipped. I literally was bored. I did not care. Don't don't hit me up about this e beef shit, bro. I don't give a fuck. 
But in terms of like collabs and shit, that shit cool. Just you know, you ain't gotta be, you ain't gotta do all that, bro. Just you know what it is. We're just oh, keeping the cool. basketball. I don't, I don't really care, but it's cool. Oh man, that's that's what I'm talking about, Damo. God. <laughs> I ain't trying to put Dom on no mix either, but I ain't like how the only thing I will say if I have to well, stand on business is uh I ain't like how he tried to paint it as like we was just dick sucking Domo. We called the nick, we said the nigga Domo's being obtuse. We said we said Domo's our guy. Bought a fuck he bought a fuck he faking right now. I forgot what the take was, but I remember you said some I think you said was, Chris Middleton was gonna be the second option or something. Yeah, you said Chris Middleton is gonna be a second option. We was like, all right. <laughs> he was like, all right, bro. Like, you know how I feel about Dame? What are we talking yes, about? yes, but that's what we were we saying. Also we also mentioned like, that. We no, literally said like we Dame. know how Dom will be about Dame. He's just being weirdly obtuse about the about the shit. I don't know how he took that as we was talking about him. But shout out to other niggas on PC and <laughs> gaslighting it because I already did the same. That's a non beef to me, bro. Because I, 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 no, I know no, when I sound condescending, and done. this was not one of those. I tell games. you what, I tell you what, I saw on me. I saw on me. Damn. And that's why, because it just makes sense. It just makes sense. Listen here, Mr. TV, right? I'm calling you out. This is crazy. <laughs> that's what happened to me from the doing him. Thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I want to punch the ticket. <laughs> that's his soundboard, not mine. I want to punch the ticket. You feel He's what I'm fire. saying? I want you on this platform. You and my guys, one on one, two on one. What? Fuck it, two on one. Yeah. What? No, 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 no. no. Well, it won't be two on one. It won't be two on one. It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be two on two. Uh, uh, if you're joining the ticket fish... side, Damo. Oh, that is no, crazy. whoa, 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 no. I'm saying if there's an official invitation being sent, take it. Bring somebody from the player's choice side. You, hey, bring your tag team partner of the world, Mars. Even though he said he's not going to come, bring Mars. <laughs> bring OG. Bring in. Hey. Bring Lamont, bring whoever you want, man. Hey, Lamont, I'm be ready Saturday, nigga. I'm busting that ass. Just know that. But bring, bring whoever. Bust. Two on two, though. We can't do two on ones. That's crazy. Nah, I, That's I, cool. I don't, I don't like. Nah, we can talk basketball shit like that. I don't care. I just let's punch the ticket, say. <laughs> oh man, that again. He's trying to make this a beef thing. I don't care. <laughs> like, is that? I know what y'all going to do. Literally, nothing to beef over, bro. But that's what I'm saying. It's nothing to beef over. And even if it was, I just don't believe in e beef. So don't beef with him then. What the fuck? Since y'all want to beef so bad, no, I'm, I'm not, already I'm beef not. with him. Yeah. I'm beef with him some more on our platform. On I've what done the fuck? It. Do it I'm again. Not a, I'm not a basketball Shut creator, man. And, 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 and I'm gonna tell you what. This is that condescending stuff. I know B Souls is back. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Ticket. Exactly. Yeah. I know what I'm. Con- I know what I'm condescending, and I rewatched the video like three no, times, and I was not being be, condescending. You don't gotta be humble, Mr. B Souls. We know. And for Sage, I, I know you wait for this. Out. Let's get it, Mr. <laughs> ticket. Let's get it, Mr. Ticket. This is this is stupid, man. Look. There was a reason we reacted to Player's Choice because we actually admire what they had going on over there. Uh, and I don't, oh, so, that's that, yeah. It, yeah, so it's like, have a beef. Me I, I ain't choice. got no beef, man. Shout, shout out to Player's Choice. It's no beef. All I'm going to say is the Jupiter joke was right there. I don't know how you called him Fat Mars and they called him Jupiter. Jupiter would have been funny, but maybe I'm going. That's oh, I just got it. Damn. Yeah, you see? Like, that's crazy. But hey, that's just me. Thanks for that one. Mm. Um, too? Nah, disagree. Incorrect. All I'm gonna say to, to end the to end the, the Vicky conversations is what I remained. You say you said majority of people say uh, you think they're not stupid. I think majority of people. Well, I want to add in that when it comes to rookies, because in general, oh, I think I think majority of people did not know about watch or have any clue of who Victor was pre off season. Going into the draft, so they didn't know what to think, and so then when the big talking heads came out with crazy, stupid stuff to say, if he if, if he ends up being Anthony Davis or Hakeem, then that's a failure. Uh, he's gonna be his rookie year is gonna be better than nineteen year old LeBron and rookie year Kareem. Those people that because again, this isn't even college basketball. You, the only time people saw him in America on a on a mainstay was when they played. Uh, uh, the G League Ignite. And he had a phenomenal game in the G League Ignite, which then the next time they even hear about him is when those crazy expectations are being set, which to me solidifies that. You got to, again, we, we talked about it last time. 
Most niggas is just super casual. And that comes to games that they can see in America. Let alone games they can see overseas. Hell no. It'd be that one dude draft night. That you know the overseas guy. Oh my God, he's he's amazing. He's a raw talent. That one guy sets the expectations for all international players for the majority of people. So I don't think that they even understand what the fuck is going on. They did not know. But now they're running with what the big heads are talking about. Come back down to earth, dog. Just that's all I'm ever saying. Come back down to earth. That's it. Don't overreact to every single game. He's not a goat this game and a bust the next game. Get that man five years, six years, seven years. Give him some time. Everybody, give everybody time. That ain't gonna happen. But okay. agreed on that part. On that specific point, agreed. 100%. Hell yeah. I don't even think they're gonna do that. I don't even think they're gonna do. Well, I ain't gonna say they're not gonna do that. I just hate the selectiveness of the guys we give time to, what we give attention to, because no one is talking about how phenomenal Cade is playing as a scorer. He was the number one pick yeah. two years ago. Uh, it, it's insane how no one's talking about how great of a score he is. Not a playmaking. The turnovers are a fucking. Problem. I think he leads the league in turnovers. The turnovers are a fucking issue. And I said it night night one. I don't like the 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 shit I'm seeing with him turnover wise. He probably should not be an on-ball point guard, a full-time point guard, because these turnovers are not looking like – unless you want to be Westbrook or James He's Harden. a high-volume guy. He Even a, even scoring his efficiency isn't exactly the yeah. best. He's a and, and that's guy. fine when it comes to scoring, because if you're if you're a high-volume guy, cool. The efficiency might not be there. But in terms of how he play makes, he has lackadaisical turnovers. Uh-huh. He has turnovers where it's just like the effort's Lazy. not there. Yeah, it's real late, and he's a nonchalant-looking nigga. So it's even worse. It's like Derrick Rose <laughs> making a mistake. He just makes a mistake and just looks like, oh, who gives a fuck? So it makes it look way worse. So I don't think he should be a full-time point guard. I think he should be two. I uh, Now, well, Killian says, Hayes is on the fucking team. I don't know. What and, no, no, no. <laughs> and that's the issue. I don't know what Monty Williams is doing. Wait, don't, don't say his name yet, Damo. Tweet, tweet it out. I know who you were about to say. Tweet it out, and then when, like, All-Star break comes around, we could be like, yeah, we knew about Big M from Detroit, nigga. Yeah, yeah, nigga. I go ahead, go ahead. You know, finish your point. Fuck it, fuck it. First of all, I, I'm not even. First of all, I wasn't gonna say Marcus because Marcus is a, a he's a scorer. So I think he should. I think he plays the Cole Anthony role real well, real well. And if Cole gets better playmaking wise, then I'm with you. Hey, I'm I'm putting out that tweet with M and me like, yeah, we was there first. I feel you. <laughs> but I, I, I need know. I, I need Jaden Ivy to do better as a playmaker so he can start because Killing Hayes needs to sit his light skin ass down. I need a little sexy Ubre. Just sit down. This is crazy. Um, I, I, I can't stand it. But, yeah, I, it's unfair. People aren't talking about Paolo. It's funny. I was on Twitter the other day. Oh, man, we got to have – I think it was fucking – I'm not even going to say that because I don't want to give him no slander because I don't even think it was him. But people talking about all oh, the expectations for Paolo, what's going on. He was averaging 12. Then he goes up there and drops 30, and it's quiet. He's having great games, strings along some great games, and finding his rhythm. Niggas is quiet. It's crazy. No one gives attention to these other guys that deserves it. But then Wimby comes along, and now it's, oh, man, the best number one pick we've seen since. And it's like, oh, we have two previous number one picks that are balling, and no one's talking about it. Question, That's my only- question. Is it, isn't is isn't that what y'all want, though? Is to them what? not get attention, to people for people to not overreact to things, give them time? And isn't that what people are doing with Apollo and Cade? Like, they're just, hey, they're letting them ball out, not giving them any attention, not giving them any That's- hype. That's not what I want. No, I want okay. people. I want the casual fan to be literally thrusted with all this young NBA talent. So then you could be like, okay, it, it might get a situation where the expectations have to temper down because you're seeing so many good young teams play. You're seeing so much good young talent, and then you realize, okay, these guys are good, but none of them are Stephen Curry. None of them are Kevin Durant. None of them are these guys. They're not on the level of the Jason Tatums and the Lucas that are next up to be superstars. So their their expectations have to be tampered. That way, when it comes to a guy like Wimby, there's no need to sit there and be like bum-ass Chris Boussard saying, oh, if he's just Hakeem or AD, he's a bust. Because you're watching Chet. You're watching Jalen Duran. You're watching all the other young guys in the league. And you're like, oh, well, a lot of these niggas aren't complete products. A lot of these niggas aren't the fucking tip top of the iceberg. So my expectations have to come down. That's that's just normal in the league. It'll normalize player development. But the fact that people ignore these teams, these teams aren't on TV, so you don't see it. All you do is you see the hype for Zion when it happens, so you follow Zion. John Morant gets thrusted in your face, so now you're following John. John has to be the GOAT, and so he starts flashing guns. And then it's quiet, and then Dwimby is being thrusted in your face. So, oh, my God, I got to believe Dwimby hype because you're not watching nobody else. You don't know what it's like to see a player develop and have tampered expectations, at least in my opinion. 
Um, that sounds like Wimby discourse today, but I forgot what I was going to say. Never mind. But that, that that sounds like Wimby with discourse today. But um, not nah, a perfect world that y'all envision ain't going to happen because there's no way that a casual viewer with that amount of hype will then be able to calm back down. And oh, yeah, I remember what I was going to say now. I will say, though, that that is my issue with the fans that like overly adore the young talent in the league. Is that once that player turns like even 24, you don't give a fuck about him. So granted, it's it's to a hyper level when it comes to a guy like Cade and um Paulo, because goddamn, it was two years ago, one of them weren't even in the league, right? But that I think that's a that's the only flaw with just like being a person that is over enthusiastic about young talent consistently, because eventually bro turns 25 and you don't give a fuck anymore. And it's just like, wow, that's that was your man's two years ago. That was your man's last year. Yeah, I just feel I get, like there's a there's a fine line on both regards. Don't don't overhype, but there is also like if we don't hype them up enough, you're gonna get the problem of like a Kate or a Paolo where like I, they're not getting any attention at this point. What the fuck? So and I think when it comes to the shit, just finding that fine line is gonna be extremely hard anyway. So I guess the only thing that I can say is um I mean I know it's not I know it's not gonna happen. Just for the average person, um these players don't be popping up you know, year six, seven, eight, or whatever. Um, there, there's a de- there's development, like Domo said. There's a slow development. And if oh, shit. Oh. you watched more basketball, watched more sports through the different levels, you could understand how these players develop and it wouldn't seem so crazy or you wouldn't be delusional about your team or this team or whatever the case may be. You could just have better expectations about, you know, what to expect from a guy. Um I am throwing out that Q and A link. Uh, Senor Buckets has been wanting to come up since my stream. He was N Buckets from last night's space, <laughs> so uh, apparently he wants to press me about Wemby. Oh my God! Come up. He's been well, waiting. I, He's been waiting. So I do. Uh, well, well, while we wait for him, I do um, want to set some unrealistic expectations for some players tonight. Can we do that Uh-oh. real quick? Sure, mm. man. Let's do. I it. tell you. I tell you what. Don't know the numbers. But whatever Trey Young has for turnovers, put the over on it, buddy. That's that's what I need you to do right now, B Souls. All right. Well, we can't say over, um, and the also more. don't swear. But um, all right. First of all, uh, shout out to the sponsor of this pod, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best, the easiest, the most intuitive way to play daily fantasy sports. And I'm gonna show y'all a demo of how to do it right now, chat. I'm sharing my screen. I'm sharing my screen. I'm locked. I'm one tap. One tap. One sec, one sec. One Excited second. about Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, you, I'm about to say, you were playing way too much OG Fortnite. I actually haven't. Um, so this really? is the website right here. They also got an app. Um, different sports, different stats on there. The game is very, very simple, very, very easy. Uh, guys, more or less, more or less, here are some of the picks for tonight. Mm-hmm. Actually, tomorrow. No, no, tonight. This is tonight. Yeah, this is tonight. Please, I just need to I tell see, me what Trey Young's young got going turnovers. on. Turnovers, hit them more. Just Come hit me. Just give me more, man. It's not on there. Oh, it's not even on there. Turnovers is not. Oh wow. Oh, yeah, Omar. Clint Capella. I think he'll get one. Hey. What am I saying? What's the turnovers? Oh. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. We could do more. We could do more on Clint. We could do more on Clint. Yeah, That's one turnover. Let's see what he's doing the last game. Go PRA. Um, PRA. Boom. Where's Paolo PRA? Mm, nah, I'm not gonna do that. What's uh? What's Trey Young uh for points? I just seen twenty four. We can do more. Some snapping them up. I would say less. I I would say less. Orlando has a good defense. I think this would be one of them nights where Trey Young struggles. Now I say this, and he goes out there and drops fifty. <laughs> We're gonna be looking real bad, but I think it's one of those nights where Trey Young struggles. Okay, and I need another one from another team that's not Atlanta to make the. Entry. I mean, those are all. Oh yeah. Uh, so for the magic, I would say go to rebounds. Rebounds, boom. Where's Wendell? Is Wendell playing? Uh, I don't even think Wendell's Wendell is playing. not on here. He's not on there. Uh, Paolo, more or less seven rebounds. I'll say more. Yeah, more. Okay. Put it in a calm twenty, and this is how you place the entry right there. Boom. All right, that's how simple, that's how easy it is. And thanks to Prize Picks, our users, our our supporters, our fans can uh, 
have a hundred percent deposit match up to a hundred dollars. So if you put in fifty, they'll give you fifty. If you put in a hundred, they'll give you a hundred. If you use code LKIB, links will be in the description for that. Uh, pin comment as well, and uh, hopefully you make some money tonight. So uh, shout the Prize Picks for sponsoring this video or podcast. Big Prize Picks. Big Prize Picks. Not the real one. Okay. Um, Cruz I was going to mess up the read today. Hey, it's me. <laughs> Cruz yeah, had the just, topic. Just talked a little less. Who would have thought? Who would have Cruz has the topics uh, list. I, I'm not necessarily going off that right now. Uh, let me do my little rant of the day. Listen, mm-hmm. and we also got to do the mythical meets after this. There is no better time right now, and I'm not doing any begging. You do what you want to do. Um, I'm just letting it be known. I'm excited for this season of college basketball. Mm. I'm excited. Specifically, women's basketball. There's some men that I'm I'm out there looking at, but I ain't gonna lie, I don't know if y'all seen some of these freshmen with the freshman numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Miss Clark is back on her thing, LSU, they're garbage. <laughs> Fuck those guys. But they have a super team down there. Um and just lost to Colorado. Yeah, just lost to Colorado. There was uh, Frida. I think her name is Frida something, but she's like they sniped. She sniped them out. But yeah, is Colorado it's a, good this year? No. <laughs> I mean, they they were ranked twenty when they beat LSU. Yeah, they're not LSU though. It's it's a gap. It, it's, you, well, let me say it's this. a gap. Yeah, it's usually a gap in women's college. So that yeah. difference between like one to two as far as ranking goes, and then that bottom half, like in all college sports, really, mm-hmm. there's a big difference. But just overall. Women's college basketball, specifically the freshman class, UC, USC got both like some players, both USC's, uh, Southern California and the Gamecocks. I'm just gonna say, if if you ever were like, ah, what should I tune into? It's gonna be like a 30 piece every single night or a, a 30 point triple double every single night. It's gonna get nasty this season. That's all I'm gonna say. I was trying to watch some the other day. I couldn't find any games. It was just the wrong time. You know, mommy is on tonight. Tonight, post pod. She's playing right now, I think. I shouldn't scratch like that. My bad, y'all. Like that was, oh, yeah, that's that was crazy. I was feeding for some kids. Are we all doing that round of the week, or are you just getting your? <laughs> you you got no. You can yeah, if you want to jump in there. Jump in there. Um, God, I, Miss Clark, real quick. Mine's is real quick. Uh, I don't know that's what it is. Uh, I don't know what it is about people and just not accepting things or just not being able to adjust to change or just allowing things like Omar said, allowing two things to coexist. Bro, if I have to see another white person tell me how Miles Morales is in Spider-Man, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. This is crazy. <laughs> Bro, it is super possible for Peter Parker to be Spider-Man and him being like, let me take a two-week break. And Miles Morales, so miraculously, also be a Spider-Man. I, no one has to replace anybody. It doesn't have to be a situation where one's better than the other. There can just, there can be to Spider-Man. I'm sorry you grew up. I- I'm sorry but you 30, 35 year old nerds grew up in a time where Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield were the only Spider-Mans and you didn't read comics. So it's kind of weird. You only played the games and watched the Sony movies. But Miles Morales is a new character. He's new. He was written, I want to say in 2011 he was introduced? 2012? Yeah. Chat, right. 2011, 2012? He's a new character, which means you got to get used to the nigga. I don't know. Well, the half nigga, the nigga. You got to get, let the nigga breathe. I don't, can I can nigga. I play the, the reference video or one of the reference oh, please, videos? Go please, please, go ahead. This is some YouTuber. I really don't even want to give her credit, but this is how she's starting off on her videos. Miles Morales is Miles Morales. Miles Morales. And then Bro, she goes, I... she goes in depth go talking about why he's not Spider-Man. Is it just based off of the fact that you have to be Peter Parker specifically to be a Spider-Man, or is there another case? No, 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 no. Because someone brought up a great point, and this is where I was on Twitter and I got look, I got the nerds mad saying DC's better than Marvel. Someone brought up how no one cried when in Batman Beyond when Batman was replaced by uh, Terry. Terry replaces Batman. No one cried. You can say the internet wasn't the internet back then, so it wasn't an outroar when it was new. But still to this day, no one criticizes Batman Beyond for, oh, man, 
there's only one. Bruce is my Batman. No, y'all will allow fucking Dick to be Batman. Y'all will allow Kim to be Batman. Y'all will allow fucking Joker to be Batman if you want it. Like, everybody can be Batman. But the moment, the moment Peter Parker isn't Spider-Man, the moment there's more than one Spider-Man, oh, my God, that's not my Spider-Man. Put your micro caps on at that point. This is crazy. Yeah, that's that's probably what it is. It's another case of confirmation bias, using things that you truly don't care about to get your shit off. Mm-hmm. I need to check out her channel because I feel like I've seen another crazy clip of her before, but I think she's one of those people that like those I, woke. Yeah, I'm not woke, but you know, I know what you mean. The yeah, right I'm gonna just people. I'm I'm gonna watch Barbie not because I want to watch Barbie, but because I want to get this 30 minute Ben Shapiro video off mm-hmm. type shit. So it's it's nasty out here. It's nasty. That is her. That is her. She did a Barbie movie recently. Yeah, there right. you go. even and even with the game. Oh my god. And, and this is even oh. using him as an analogy as disingenuous. <laughs> yes, yeah, learn how to spell, buddy. Learn how to spell, buddy. <laughs> anyway, and this isn't even just about the Miles Morales thing. This is just about Spider Man fans just loving to complain. Disingenuous. I was told how great of a game Spider Man 2 would be. I was told how it's game of the year, it's going to be this, that, and the third. Now, I watched the Rad Brat play it. It looked cool. It, it looked like a cool little game. I like the story. Shit was fine. The amount of people I've seen complain about the dumbest shit with this game is, it, oh my god, if I gotta play this deaf girl graffiti in a wall, ugh, what is this? This isn't the game I signed up for. I watched the dude, a black guy, by the way, I watched the dude complain about the fact that when you look up skirts on the game, you can't see vagina. Yeah. Yo, no, no, no. What? And I seen I seen that same clip too. I seen Yo, that same what? clip too. I seen a dude. Oh, focus. I seen a dude complaining, looking up skirts. Oh man, look at the look look at this shit. Look it's at, unrealistic look at this bullshit, man. I, I can't stand this. What's the point of me having all this giga chad ba 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 shit if I can't see the pussy print? Like, bro, what are we Watch doing? Watch porn, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> Thank you. God damn. What are we doing? Pause the game. When you press start, the whole game pauses, bro. Like literally, nothing moves. This Go on Pornhub and get your shit off. And don't get me started about the suit. Oh my god. I, bro, don't get me started. Oh, bro, this mouse suit is so trash. And y'all gonna force us to wear it? You can, you can change the suit. Yes, there might be a mission or two where you gotta wear it. <laughs> so what? Nigga, take it off. Oh, yeah, there, the there, there is a portion in the game where, like, he's like, ah, oh, this is my new suit. I needed to design something myself. And, like, you can't change it for, like, the last two missions. But again, it's the last two missions, bro. It's part of the plot. I mean, so this yeah. is her, and this is her video. I say, if you have some takes on it, we we'll talk about it afterwards. But I just want to play a little bit more. Miles Morales is S O L Z. Miles Morales. However, you know just as much as I do that they have been trying to shoehorn Miles Morales into Peter Parker's Spider-Man space. Miles Morales is the real Spider-Man now because we are completely eliminating an existing character and pushing him out of the picture he doesn't matter anymore especially well first they're gonna cuck him then they're gonna push him out of the picture all right that is what has happened but now i mean it's already been going on enough in the comics well now they are trying to do this in the video games as well if you don't it's bad enough she already looks like friday adams the throw the fact that all i hear when she's talking is just Blatant, and I mean blatant MAGA energy is crazy. Yeah, it's a like, gender pushing. The Definition. butter inflo- inflatable though is kind of hard in the back. I'm not gonna lie. I do fuck with this. Don't care. It it screams, it screams racism. I don't know. I don't know. I, I seen Wabe tweeted out earlier, and at first I was like, nah, man, you tripping, Wabe. Nah. At the more I and the more I dove into it and heard other people complain about it, go through her comments of people agreeing, and all you see is. I mean, think about the pandemic and everybody you've seen wearing MAGA hats and then remove the MAGA hats. That's who I was agreeing. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this might actually... And then the one black guy who wears MAGA hats is down there, too. It's kind of crazy. Like, no one is trying to replace Peter. No one is shoehorning him out to have him in the spot. I just thought, nigga, Pete needed a break. I don't know. I, I thought it was reasonable. And Pete got two games, bro. Play Spider-Man 1 if it's really that much of a problem, bro. God damn. They remastered it. God. Well, Let me play the TTS real quick, though. Hold on. Oh, okay. The five dollar TTS. Sage, if you could have a WrestleMania main event feud with any of the pod members, who would it be, and would you be the face or heel? Uh, all right. Um, 
it'd be with Damo as a baby face. Um, in general, I'd be a heel throughout the entirety. But at Mania, I want to be a baby face and I want to be against Damo. Why? Because it's underdog story. So hundred percent need you that need that face run. Need that face run. Need that face run. Um. Hey, you can't no. out heal me. What are you talking about? In a storyline? You can't no, out heal no, no, me. No, 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 no. So in the keep it a buck verse, I, I, I actually would be a heel turn. I would, I would snake the uh, shit out of yeah. you. So yeah, exactly. Come yeah, on, bro. Sense. I'd be, to, I'd be a top tier heel at one context. point in time. Omar is the typical everybody you expect him to be a heel type shit. But then that one day I just Seth Rollins a motherfucker. That's like oh shit, what the fuck? But then by the end of Mania, I want to be a face. Um. In terms of what y'all was saying, I was quiet. I was laid back intentionally for a change. She's a Steelers okay. fan, by the way, before you. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, I just want to say, bro, I, I I seen the tweet. Sw- swipe down to the comment section. That's all I needed to know. I, I, don't, I, I advocate the rest of my time to y'all. I seen them comments. Oh, you know how they're going to feel about it. Oh, oh Lord, the looks are going to be mad. I seen sensitive three times. I'm like, okay. we already know what this I was, is. I don't need, this is I don't a new need no, mermaid, I don't bro. need no oh. Miss Voldy like that. Let me just, let me just move on, bro. I don't need no show you like that. I'm I still a, did see people like, I, cause when I see tweets like this, I go to your account to see like, what did you tweet after? What like, what have you been saying since? I seen. Oh, I, I see that side of Twitter has now seen that tweet. Yeah, and all I yeah, seen. Like, oh. Yeah, you you had to make them mad. Them is capitalized. I'm like, who the <laughs> fuck is them? Who, who's them? <laughs> who's they? What do you mean it's all right, bro? They deserve to be mad. They nobody and, pronoun you. And, and I'm a, I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something because like all these people are in it for the content now. I I want to say that some of them do believe, but I've seen her video specifically. It was it was the Barbie one. She, um, I don't know, like she stares at a monitor as if like somebody typed out a script and then she's supposed to say these things word for word for word. Um, and and another one that she did a, a, a recent video on was the you know, the Marvels, the, the Marvels trailer came out or whatever. I I, they the were in the uproar, up. huh? I yeah, think the, the movie's movie fully up. Yeah, the yeah. Movie's out. Oh. Okay, well, so they were talking about this is uh, this was a minute ago then it had to be because yeah. they were talking about the the trailer and the plot. I think they said the plot leaked or some shit like that. But anyway, they were talking about it, and they are just oh my god, look at them feminizing the women, and they, they want them to be upstanding women as superheroes. This is crazy. Oh, what are we doing? Get back in. No, no, no. But no, basically, and you can, if you go in the comment section, that's what they're saying. Hey. Hey, let the women be superheroes just like they, they have it on here and see what really happens with society. I'm like, Captain Marvel's like pretty doggone strong, dude. I don't know. I I, I, I don't know. This is like, that's a crazy thing to say. If you hate women, just, I honestly, instead of attacking stuff that you're also too old to be caring this much about, instead of just, just hey, I hate women, dog. I hate the blacks. People need to stand on business more. I hate Mexicans. Coming from me, right? But people just stood on business, and a lot of shit be simple. Just do that. Just, yeah. just, just say what you feel, bro. But, I can't um, stand. Oh, go okay. ahead. Nah, I, I really saying, don't know why I said, but um, go ahead. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I can't stand the fact so many people are this passionate and, 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 and this vocal about these Marvel movies and never picked up a comic a day in their life. That's the shit that blows the fuck out of me. People are so passionate. People have these opinions and all this shit, but have never seen the origin story of these women, never read their stories, never knew none of it. You your only end to Marvel is the fucking movies. And you're this passionate. That shit is weird to me. Like genuinely weird. And I noticed that shit on Twitter. Yo, I'm like, yo, DC Clears. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, outside of animated series and, and, and comics and, and, and Marvel clears. I'm like, outside of animated series and comics, motherfucker, we're talking about comic characters. What else matters? I mean, a lot of movies. Okay, that's one third of the big three. And DC Diamond's two thirds of it. Nigga, how, how is Marvel like clearing? Oh. oh, I just like the movies. Like, I just like the movies. Like, all right, y'all. buddy, this is stupid. I don't know. Um, I don't wait, Chad, up, uh, the big guy never wins the Iron Man match. Y'all are bugging. Y'all don't y'all want to y'all do that wrestling shit for real, man. Mm, casuals. Big guy never wins the Iron Man. Casuals. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring up... Uh, that, that's what I'm fucking saying. Fucking Iron Man, you're bugging. <laughs> you're insane. That is the worst match. A tables matches for Damo all day, every day. 
<laughs> Inferno match. Look away. Let's get this shit done. Like, what are you doing, Chad? What are you doing? We're not wrestling for a long time. We're wrestling for a good time. Oh. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, shout out to Dark Bandit for the five gifts. Man. <laughs> Hello, man. All right, I'm bringing him up. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, this is uh, What's good, man? Yeah. And buckets. Sure. good. Me and Omar were getting active in the Twitter space last night. Mm. You know, uh, this guy, B-Souls, he didn't want the smoke. It's fine. Yeah. I came up. I came up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like five minutes, ten minutes after, and then you were like laying in bed. Because I was in bed with my girl and I had to step yeah, out yeah. to step up. So I still came up. What are yeah. you? You know what? I I'll give you the credit. I'll give you the credit. Thank my you. point, my point last night, and my point basically all of today was, Chet clears Victor at this point, and I think maybe even long term he might do it as well, just because of the shooting. I mean, I'm looking at the percentages right now. Um, Chet, 55 percent from three. Obviously, he's not going to keep doing that, but mm -hmm. if, if he can be anywhere from 35 to 40 percent, um, Victor out here with a 28 percent, or no, 29 percent. I'm sorry, 29 percent from three. I mean, that's just that's abysmal. That's abysmal. You know, that's who shot a higher volume. Who shoots a higher volume with three shots? It's Victor. Uh, looking at it, Victor has five threes a game. Um, Chet has three and a half. So I guess yeah, he's taking a couple more. But yeah, but the the point the point is is the same. I mean, they're averaging similar points per game. Chet is seventeen. Um, Victor is nineteen, but Victor has taken fifteen shots a game. Mm -hmm. And Chet is taking 10 shots a game. So two more points on five more shots. That's that's kind of suspect. But I understand. I understand this is rookie year, but it's also mm -hmm. the rookie year. So I think we got to weigh them at least, you know, we've only seen, what, six, seven games of both of them. Okay. I think we have to weigh them pretty even. So what's Who's, the cook? What's the cook? I disagree, but this is your argument. So. I, I mean, I see where you're coming what from. You, it's not It's not the worst take. I don't understand. No, you, you said you were coming up here to cook me. So what's the, like, I. The, the uh, cook is the fact that he's. At least performing right now, he's got one good game, and he's got. I mean, it's a great game, yes, but one. Wimby's only had one good game. One, one legitimately good game, yeah. Who's better defensively and why? Wemby, Wemby is a better defensive player, but I don't, you know, I don't see that as the only thing that matters. That's not. That's not going to like raise the bar completely past. What What makes Wemby a better defender than Chet? I've just I've seen you know in the six games I've seen more of defense from him i mean he's got two and a half blocks chet also has two and a half two and a half blocks it doesn't like there's not a huge difference but wemby's out on the break when more. you say when you say it's kind of i'm not gonna say unfair to compare the two but when you say it's a situation where chet is the third fourth option in the given night on his team and plays within the offense because he's so worried about defense which is why his volume is so low as a score compared to wemby who is any given night taking the most shots on the team, and if he's not, he's iced out. But even going into the fourth quarter, his volume increases because of how pivotal he is to that team. And one that, has Josh Giddy and SGA playmaking. The other has Jeremy Sochin and Pop. No, that's that's 100% true. And I said in b stream earlier, I was like, they need to actually get sets for Wemby instead of just having him in the pick and roll. Because mm -hmm. right now, he's just getting shots in the pick and roll. We saw like a couple of a couple of shots he had with his left hand. It looked like he had no clue what he was doing. Um, but you're right. Shet has um, has Shea and he has Josh Giddy, and it's it's a huge difference, obviously. But um, I, I just want to ask you because you said he only had one good game, right? I'm assuming it's the 38 point game. Yeah, yeah. Right. I just want I just want you to tell me if these games are good or bad. When he had 18 points, eight rebounds, four blocks, shot 50 percent from the field, is that a good or a bad game? I would say that's an average game. That's an for, average for how, game for how for how they're hyping oh, him up. An average game. How are you hyping him up? Yeah, how are you hyping him up? <laughs> I, heard, I, I heard, I don't remember if it was Chill I, or Ticket or somebody say 27 a game was what they should be expecting from him this year. But so, what what do you expect? No, no, no. Not I just say, you, this, this is your whole main yeah. problem. 21, 22 on 10, 11 rebounds. And how, okay, how much Okay, wait, 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 wait. So, so in that game, you said 21, 22 on 10, 11 rebounds. He had 20 and 9, so like two less points, one less rebound. Had four, four assists. I don't know how many assists you're expecting from Wemby, but he had four. He had five blocks. That's impressive. How many, how many blocks are you impressing, uh, uh, expecting from him? At least three, but... Okay, yeah. so we got five. So that's three a good guys. game. So oh, that's, that's a really good defensive game. I'm not okay. denying it. Uh, an another game. Um, His second game, 21 points, 12 rebounds, three steals, three blocks. He did shoot 37% from the field. Is that a good or a bad game? 
I don't like the 37%. I'm big on field field goal percentage. Scoring is a big piece for me, especially since he's the number one option. So I don't. So like, so that's a bad game too. That's a bad game too. It's a be, like below average or average. What did he do from the line that game? So wouldn't Wemby lead the? Oh, he shot seven or eight from the line. That that's actually pretty good. Just okay. Looking, just looking at it though, you know. If if, or, if you're if you value field goal percentage so much that you're looking at twenty one points, twelve rebounds, three steals, and three blocks as a bad game. I'm not saying that was a bad game. I'm saying it's an average game. Like that's what I expect from him. You know. But people are saying twenty seven. That's excessive, and especially on the field goal percentage you're shooting right now. So, so this, is, this, can, so this is what I'm talking about with like the the cool down, the Wemby hype people. Y'all have higher expectations than motherfuckers like that have like regular expect. I swear to God, y'all have higher expectations than me that's at fair. this point. I wouldn't even. I don't even disagree with that. It's kind of true, yeah. Because, but I yeah, because like you're literally up here and saying a 2010 three block three steal game. Is an average game for a 19 year old rookie. Well, I'm not looking at it like that though. I'm looking at it as what people are putting him up to be. Man, I've been reserved on it, and y'all, y'all let this skate pass. Maybe I'm immature and casual. Dog, he said that Victor Wibanyama is supposed to lead the league in blocks last year off rip. And then, then, Jaron Jackson had three blocks and was a distant first last year. Who said that? You, nigga. <laughs> what did I say? He was supposed to lead the league you, in blocks. You said he was oh, supposed to average three, three blocks. So, three yeah, you said he's average three a game. And last season, Triple J was a distant clear of one in BPG at three, flat, actually. Then number two is um a bunch, I think, a bunch of people. It's just uh Nick Claxton and Brooke Lopez with two and a half. I mean, two and a half to three. So he's supposed to be top a uh, top five shot blocker off rip, four. and he's you think four. that other and you think other people have high expectations. So uh, again, uh, let me let me tell tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. But you came up here and said that your expectations. Fuck everyone else. Okay. Your expectations is 22, 10, and leading the league in blocks. Yeah. So you yourself have extremely high expectations for him. I have high years. expectations for him based on what everybody was saying going into the draft, him being the number one pick, him supposed to be the most hyped prospect since LeBron. Yes, I have high expectations. Let, let me let me change. So you're a part of your problem. I want here. you to know that you are a part of your okay, problem. Yeah, yeah. Let me change this into fair, something yeah. that everybody is essentially asking but hasn't hit on it. After what you've seen from Victor Wimbanyama, let's say there was no hype, you didn't have a cell phone. After what you've seen from Victor Vimbanyama, what is your personal opinion on what he can be one day? I think he's got the potential. I don't want to say like Kevin Durant because that seems you know crazy, especially with how he's shooting right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, like a Chris Stapps type of thing, but obviously better than Chris Stapps like ceiling. Um, but that type of player, I think actually what Mitch said about him being like a similar type of player is kind of true. Like they have the same type of game, but mm -hmm. he doesn't get utilized that way. I don't know why. Okay. So, yeah, I have I have two questions. One, okay. can you name me the perimeter oriented players that are rookies that are top two options on their team that in their rookie year have a decent to good field goal percentage? I don't know. I don't know what Melo's field goal percentage was. Ass. Well, Melo's was like probably four. Ash, yeah. ash, it might ass. be lower. But the difference is the difference is with somebody like Melo or LeBron or somebody that's a forward or a guard. Is they're taking more jump shots now. I know Wemby does shoot, but he's also a big. He gets he gets a lot of inside looks. So no, 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 no. He doesn't. So I ain't he, gonna lie. he he legit <laughs> relies on it. He <laughs> plays outside in. He relies on his jump shot more than anything. Now, yes, he has his moments where he will flash the basket or get a possession under the rim because he's a put back. Ball, but for the most part, because and that's why he's playing power forward. He plays on the perimeter most of the time. So, again, that's why I said perimeter-oriented players that are first or second options because you can look through drafts and find these rookies who, as big men, they're going to have high field goal percentages. We're talking like Jalen Duran's guys who are literally at the basket the whole time. So, if we're talking perimeter guys who are first or second options, how many of those guys have decent to good field goal percentages say, when they're taking majority jump shots, uh, high-volume threes? Say say the Melo comparison, Melo had less spacing back then. Melo had less spacing back then. But, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Don't let Omar coach you. Don't let Omar coach you. That's crazy. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing the challengers. Oh my God. <laughs> crazy. I was to, be, to be fair, though, I think you know the type of shots like and that that, that would be wrong. Like, and Omar just set you up to be wrong because when, yeah. when the hell was forty two percent good? Well, decent. When was forty two percent from the field decent? 
he it was 42 not even 40 oh that's not but that, that's not no no, no that's, that, that's not that's not what i was saying i'm saying the the comparison why there be uh, a bad percentage for mellow the reasoning would be like less spacing as oh, opposed you're talking to about La Mello. You're, you're talking about lamello ball I'm talking about carmelo. carmelo okay yeah carmelo 42 percent from the field but even with carmelo he still y'all talking about lamello y'all he said lamello you were saying lamello weren't you you were saying lamello right Gang down here, I don't know. Mellow name. mix up has happened. I was saying, oh, I was this is crazy. No, I was oh, saying you, you were you were saying Carmelo. Okay, Carmelo. so even I'm gonna say <laughs> Carmelo genuinely, Carmelo shooting 42 percent from the field <laughs> his rookie year. Again, there is no there is no rookie who has the responsibility of a first or second option in their rookie year who's shooting good. They all shoot bad. They all shoot bad to somewhat below average from the oh, field man. because it's an adjustment period. Like that's oh. that's a, a normal rookie year expectation. <laughs> now, guys that are third, fourth, fifth options as rookie, like Chet, yeah, they will shoot good because they're not a priority to teams on offense. I mean, again though, Chet with the 17 while being a third option, while shooting over 50%. That's that's the difference that I'm seeing. If Wimby only shot 10 shots, 12 shots, on average, I'm pretty sure his efficiency would be higher. If he I mean, it, depend, it would depend on the shots that he's taking and how open they are, but yeah. I mean, no, I saw, ball, I saw him... talking this to death. It's, it's, it's cool. W press, L press at the same time. I ain't gonna lie. You gotta... Yeah, mid press, I ain't gonna lie. Mid, mid. We, rep, we rep New York, okay? We rep New York. Shouts we'll out see. to Mitchell Robinson, man. <laughs> we'll, see the Celtics. we'll see the Celtics in the East Finals. And we're gonna kick their ass. That's all I gotta oh, yes. say. Was- Appreciate you. Oh, that reminds me. I didn't see that game. Did Mitch call a shot? Yeah. Damn, he did. I, I was hiding from the stat. Fuck it. I'm curious now. Hold on. Really? I had I had Victor's stats uh Victor's like 0 6 when guarded by Mitch specifically. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my god, he yeah. only yeah. had 14 yeah. points. No, no, no. Six, six, six. He didn't he didn't really have 14 points. I ain't gonna lie to you. It wasn't what it so essentially what happened is the first half. It was a, I don't even want to say it was a close game, but they actually both played and Mitch shut him down. He had zero points a half. And then in the third quarter, when it was like a 20 point blowout or some shit like that, um, that's when he started. Oh my God. And really, Damn. He only had, so he all only along. One time in the third quarter. I ain't going to lie. That's why you always listen to the NBA players. They know best, bro. Bro said he a bowl, bowl, KP hybrid. Damn. Damn. Uh, before we go any further, Wait, we do got to establish. Were we talking about LaMelo or Carmelo? He was talking about Carmelo. He was talking about Carmelo. I okay, so LaMelo. when you he hear said LaMelo. He said 45%, and I'm thinking, did LaMelo, I assume LaMelo shot a higher percentage from the field than Carmelo, because I know Carmelo didn't shoot that well his rookie year. Man, uh, yeah, when, I, when he LaMelo said... Ball, okay. let, me make sure, let me make sure, because I'm covering my bases. LaMelo, LaMelo shot 44% from the field. Yeah, I knew he shot higher, and he said 45%. So I thought he meant LaMelo. Nah, man, I ain't gonna lie. When I hear Melo, even when he said forty five, I was like, "Damn, this nigga just got rookie Melo stats wrong." I, I never Lamelo didn't even come to my motherfucking mind. I was like, Andre Miller, a point. Come on, what is he supposed like, to do? Come on now, dog, what is he supposed to do? And, and, and y'all talking about oh, wait, forty five percent? Lamelo had that two years. Ago. What? Oh, oh my man, fault. I, old. It happened. I ain't gonna lie, Lamelo ain't earned that name, so no, we, we need to stop no, that. Yeah, we need to stop that. Y'all want to? Y'all want to? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> y'all want to give? Y'all want to give his number away in Denver? Nah, man. We at least gotta let Carmelo have something, man. Melo, Carmelo blessed him with the name. Carmelo said he could have the name. Carmelo gave him the name. He want to be cool, with the, be, be cool with the kids. I'm not trying that's to hear PC that. Mello, PC Mello, PC Mello, PC oh Mello. Oh, that's, that's old low. That's old low. Come on, yeah. bro. Nah, 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 nah. Um, before we keep going, man, I'm ready to get some meat in my mouth. No cap. Oh, man, not again. Oh. We have, for reaching oh. the sub goal, a mythical meat pack. It's mystery mythical meats. Yes, exotic game snack sticks. Ten random creatures. Um, they have like names like a uh, mermaid is on the back. Of, oh, let me pull this. Oh like, yeah, I know. I don't. I don't. And I guess they don't tell you for real. For real. Werewolf, mermaid, Rainier, leprechaun, centaur, troll? yeti, big bigfoot, gremlin. That's what I have on mine. Unicorn. I, I got I werewolf. Label. I must. Say, I have werewolf. 
reindeer, troll, griffin, Loch Ness monster, unicorn. Oh, this shit is crazy. This is like 17 different names of things in one. Oh my god. I'm talking oh, about labeled with the actual names of the meat that it actually no, is. I'm saying yeah, it says Pegasus right here. No, that's there's not Pegasus meat, my nigga. I'm asking what it really is. Oh. Oh, my shit stinks. It's probably just beef jerky with like certain seasons in it, dog. Oh, smell y'all shit. Did y'all shit not smell bad? It's I, not like beef I'm jerky. It's not open in it. <laughs> yeah, this it smells smell like, like beef jerky. This smell like beef. what the fuck? Beef jerky does smell like centaur. what the fuck, so I'll give you that. <laughs> I, have, I have centaur right here. Wait, so do we all have the same meat? <laughs> that, shit, that shit stink, don't it say? I'm, I, no funny shit. <laughs> Alright, what we eating first, bro? Is it all crazy colors? Like, do y'all have do y'all like? have troll meat? Because I want to I want to see what some troll meat tastes like. I got Ooh. troll meat right here. I got the troll meat. Oh my god, this smells like dog food. Yeah, yeah I ain't gonna food. lie. I just fed my dog, and this smell exactly like that. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, here we go. Mm. Troll meat. It's a Let's lot uh of made. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Are we eating all of this? Let's try troll meat, mermaid meat, and then... Wait, wait, um, wait, wait. Troll, we're doing mermaid. And chupacabra meat. So is this it, or is there like an extra film that I need to remove? <laughs> Yo, you think your meat has foreskin? Do you, 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 you kill your beef jerky? I, I don't know the last oh time I Oh my god, this thing. smells awful. <laughs> this smells really bad, actually. I'm wait, you, said, you said who? You said yeah, troll? troll. You said chupacabra? Troll, chupacabra, and mermaid meat. I ain't seen no mermaid. Oh my time. god, this smells I don't awful. Wanna, I don't want to do this. Wait, smell. I have two trolls. Wait, hold on. Like the, hey, yo, smell I'm, the troll. I'm smell the troll. I smell it. I mean, it smells like beef jerky. Yeah, it smells like beef jerky. Yo, what, what beef jerky do y'all eat that smells like Hey, this? I don't I, eat beef jerky. This is I'm, just I think I wanna... I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't have mermaid. I have two trolls, though. Well, pick out pick out some other meat. Just, just pick out three random meats. Let's eat this. Come on. Yeah. Right. So we can get on to the next thing. Vsauce took the first bite. How does it taste, Vsauce? Tastes ashy. The fuck? <laughs> ashy is a crazy description. Ashy is crazy. All right. Oh my god, when you unwrap it, it smells worse. Why is it it's, sour? This can't smell like dog food to y'all. It does. And I have dog food in my Even house, worse. So. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this tastes that like a That smell one just one. hit a second wind because I got a fan next to me. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. oh no. Oh. I mean, it, do, it, it don't taste <laughs> fresh. It just tastes like regular beef jerky. I ain't gonna lie. It don't taste, it don't taste bad. The consistency, like the texture is kind of whack in the middle, oh, but not fucking wish, nigga. I smell like um Yeah, this don't taste nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna taste. I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, you like troll meat. I don't know how to tell you. Yeah, my room is about to smell crazy. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. Yeah, I'm I mean, done I'm done with that. Yeah, this aftertaste is kind of crazy, though. I'm gonna try chupacabra meat next, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, that aftertaste is kind of wild, but <laughs> this ain't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I do need Health? something to drink to clean my palate. Say, eat the meat, nigga. Well, I, I, I ate, bro. What? Uh, the, the mermaid jump. Ariel Chase, like, eat the meat. Eat the meat. Ariel shit with the cool, meat, bro. We gotta eat two. We gotta try two more. Eat the meat. Eat the meat, Sage. Oh fuck my jaw. Look at. We can see you faking. We just Ugh. seen you. Faking. I'm about to throw up, bro. We just seen you faking. I'm going eat the meat. Uh, what? I'm going with chupacabra. Oh man. Eat that meat, Sage. Y'all ain't gotta do this. Put that meat in your mouth, nigga. Oh my god, is it gushing? <laughs> Oh my god. Ew! I tried oh, to why is this shit. Ew. Okay, I ain't gonna lie. Why is this so soft? What the fuck? Hey, Chupa Carver, mad soft. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? Sage, eat the meat, man. This is the. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this, bro. What Chupa is Carver this? Eat the this meat. Crazy. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, nah, I ain't gonna hold you. Nah, Chupa Carver oh whack. Oh, Chupa Carver no. is whack. I ain't gonna lie. Chupa Carver whack as fuck. Bro, Sage, can't... eat the meat. Troll me better. Oh, 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 oh my god, that's nasty. Oh my god, that's nasty. Oh my god. Oh, wait, <laughs> actually, that's, nasty. One, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Oh, actually, oh, why, that's disgusting. I mean, mermaid meat is actually going to be pretty good, is what it is. I don't even got mermaid meat. Fuck. Um, oh, my god. I, I guess I'll do elf. That's my third one. All right, this, this is elf. This is elf right yeah, now. Oh, elf. yeah. Mermaid meat is good. 
Try of course, the fucking good one I don't got. Elf Chronicle. Uh, Elf Chronicle. Um, it's not good. No, it's not. Mm. It's not good. Y'all have an elf right now? Mm. I'm, I'm having right mermaid. Now. Say it's can't do food. Chop. You're right. Y'all got it, bro. I can't. Mm -mm. Mm. Nigga, I am not eating pork. Trust me. I'm. I'm. Oh no. It's. Oh mm. damn. Never mind. Y'all can't man. gaslight me into that one. Yeah. Oh, Omar. I see what you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. Where it's just like the That's actual meat that it is. Yeah. That's there's. Pork pork. Uh, Big booty. I took like the smallest piece possible, and I got aftertaste, dog. Like this is crazy, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Elf ain't bad. Yeah. Elf right. is calm. I'm not finishing it though. I'm not finishing any of these. Y'all got it. I might, I ain't gonna lie to you. I might finish, I'll finish this last one for the call. Yeah, I, mean, I might finish Troll. Troll might get finished. I ain't gonna hold you. I try another one just so I'm not a complete idiot, but I can't do it. Bite the whole thing, Sage. Bite the yeah, meat. Yeah, nah, all right, all right. Bite the uh, meat. I already took my piece. Uh, Take you a bite, man. Stop playing. Yeah. Which one is yeah. that? Hold, what is that? What, what meat is that? Is this mermaid again? Yeah, it's mermaid again. Damn. Well, let's see it. Let's see it. <laughs> oh my that's god, bad. that's disgusting. All right, are we trying anything else next? Nah, nah. I got Loch Ness. Don't taste the same. I ain't gonna lie. Don't taste the same. Nah. We ain't gonna say they all taste the same. Nah. You say you doing a Loch Ness? Yeah. Nah. All right, I got Loch Ness right here. Y'all can go to hell. Oh, this shit, I ain't gonna hold you. This shit look like the, the, the Chupacabra. I don't like these shits. The smooth Maybe ones, I, I ain't sure gonna hold you. I've noticed. Nibble, nibble, I sure did. The ones that are like wrinkly, them taste like regular beef jerky. Them shit's fire. But these smooth and shit ones. I'll finish this one for y'all, Trap. I don't, I don't know how y'all, I don't know I'm how I'm legitimately sad now. But. Okay, yeah, I'm about to say, I was, ha I was having a bad day, God, then I had a good... gray album. on the inside. I don't even know if y'all can see that. Yes, That's... bro, it's gray. It was gray. My shit was like pussing. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. That shit is crazy. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, I'm going to try Loch Ness. Oh, God. Loch Ness, that shit. Yeah. Bad. And I got low standards for food, bro. Yo, shit, know. myself swampy. Let me sound. Taste swampy. Yeah, uh, Giannis put up 50. It's good. I ain't going to lie. That I... Oh, my God, world. <laughs> This shit definitely <laughs> tastes like fucking Nessie. Oh my god. Lionel. Sorry, no. <laughs> yeah, shit is nasty. Um, let's get into the next thing. Oh man, you know what's is doing it efficiently. He's tired of losing to these sorry ass teams. <laughs> Sit down, man. They don't need him. They don't need him. They're not playing, is it? Nope. Yes. Giannis is shooting that oh. rock up, boy. Speaking of it's losing the sorry teams, um, random two minute football take of the week. Uh yo, Damo, bro. I hate to do this to you. Oh my god! Your, your team's on for our watch, bro. Team's on for our watch, bro. It's official. We literally, we literally claw back into the game and then two or two us, and now we're frauds, bro. Bro, it's I hate to sound casual, bro, but it's three, all three, bro. Like anybody above on it, bro. I know a fraud because we were frauds last year. We were like eleven and something. I know a fraud, man. I'm not saying y'all are frauds, but I, I got my eyes open. Bro. Oh, I got another topic um, I want to bring up, uh, unless we got a pressing topic to bring up. No. Uh, I mean, we got stuff to talk about. I mean, uh, what you want to talk about? Talk about it. All right. Well, on last pod, I had that take about Attack on Titan being uh -oh. better than Naruto. And now that Sage is here, the anime uh -oh. guy, and Damo's yeah. here. <laughs> How do y'all feel about my take that Naruto is better than Attack on Titan? No, Attack you on Titan is better than Naruto. Titan's better than Naruto? <laughs> Look. Hell deliver. I said it on my stream, but I was like, you know, in the moment. So I had time to sit down think, here's my thing, bro. There will be a, a special place in my heart for Naruto and Dragon Ball that no matter what any show does, they won't, they won't ever seem like fucking better in terms of me liking the show. But in terms of objectively like storytelling, animation, Caring about characters and shit. It's Attack on Titan. We niggas ain't got a fake. I ain't gonna lie. N Nick, niggas is niggas is faking. Nigga, niggas kind of faking. I hope you didn't get a bunch of pushback last stream because it's, it's just objectively true and that's fine. It's it's, it's fine. I like Naruto way more than pretty much everybody in Attack on Titan. Um, I like Madara more than pretty much everybody in Attack on Titan. But you're not gonna tell me the series that can't even write female characters. While the other show has maybe five of the most compelling female characters I've seen in a long time, you're gonna say that that show's not better. You're not. You're gonna tell me the show that 
people literally tweet about, oh my god, the animation studios. And I nigga, I know who Mappa is. I'm, I don't even know who these animation studios. I know who Mappa is. Like this, this shit is. This I, thought, crazy, I thought Shonen did everything. Yeah, I'm all right. I, I thought it was Funimation. <laughs> I, thought, I don't know who the fuck did it, but like, come on, bro. There, the, I think the best argument for Naruto is the side characters in terms of depth, but yeah. in terms of like side character, in terms of like the importance of side characters. I mean, you could think Minato's cool. You could think guys like Toby Rama's cool, or like uh, Sasuke, even to a degree. Even though Sasuke's basically Itachi. Itachi. Itachi's cool. Itachi's a good character, though, genuinely. But like in general, Attack on Titan has like across the board good to great characters. With everybody who passes away, and let alone survives, you feel you actually feel and care about for. And my final thing is, Attack on Titan makes you give a fuck about everybody. Naruto. You can give a fuck about Lee in part one. You can give a fuck about Gar in part one. You cannot give a fuck about pretty much 99% of the women and be fine. Attack on Titan, you at some point cared about X character, Y character, Z character. It is what it is. I just want to, my rant of the day, if we were going to go in a circle, was Attack on Titan related. And shout out to AB Supreme because I knew somebody was going to do it. Uh, the whole recency bias take on Attack on Titan is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in Twitter in like nerd history. Attack on Titan dropped a decade ago. Mm. <laughs> this is not a new show i know you might have been born yesterday i know your cousin i know your big bro was born the day before attack on titan is not remotely new i don't, I don't know why niggas acting like because the ending dropped recently the entire series is new people have known about levi for years people had these takes around aaron season four for about a year like none of this shit is is new like like y'all y'all are being Y'all, like, funny enough, someone said I'm being obtuse. Y'all are being obtuse on the fact that, hey, people have drawn these conclusions about Attack on Titan, and the only question mark was how bad is this ending going to be because the manga niggas were swearing it was going to be awful. Most of the niggas, y'all are bugging. The, the ending's fine, if not good. So as a result, the conversations Attack on Titan was already in. Now it's pretty much solidified, and y'all are like, recency bias. Nothing's recent about this. Niggas were saying if the ending is bad, it might be under a peak anime. The ending wasn't bad to most people in there. Like, oh yeah, she's good. It really wasn't that bad. I ain't gonna lie. It was not. It really I, I don't bad. think it was bad at all. The only, the only I thought it was good. Was <laughs> I, I do think it's good. The only thing I'll say about the ending is that for a lot of people that aren't like, you know, what I'm saying it, it's it's hard to comprehend for some motherfuckers. You have to pay attention to detail. The um the authors, the writers, all that shit. They leave a lot of things to interpretation, so they're not gonna tell you. They're not gonna tell you what it is. A lot of people like uh in my Vegeta video. Check it out if you want. Uh, I talk about how some people need characters to cut WWE promos and tell you, hey, I'm feeling this way. Hey, I'm changing my behavior because of this, this, and that. I think that takes away the realism, and I think that's just bad writing in general. Like, that's why that's why I don't fuck with a lot of the Dragon Ball takes, because a lot of y'all favorite characters in the Dragon Ball community literally map out what they're doing, why they're doing it, and all that shit. And then there's a character like funny enough, and I know y'all call him stupid, but Goku doesn't say shit, yet his development is heavily implied, if not shown to you. Shit's ass, but um, yeah, Attack on Titan, I definitely think is better than Naruto, but however, I like Naruto a lot. Um, I think Naruto an on our series for sure. To answer your question, Souls, uh, and again, I'm the anime casual. Um, yeah, I have Naruto over Attack on Titan because I don't like Attack on Titan like that. It's Damn! Just, Why not? I gave it a shot. I, I gave it a shot. I tried to watch it. I, I got through what season one and two mm -hmm. fully. Wow! I just don't give a fuck about it. I, I just can't What's find my. Two? Was season I can't, two when they were shooting niggas? Yeah, I've just, I've just never seen a story with that crazy foreshadowing, especially after seeing the ending, and like that crazy plot uh, plot twist, bro. That's just I stopped crazy. watching it. I know niggas been talking about part seven, the the ending part. One, two, three, and four for the longest. I just let y'all niggas have it. I don't speak on Attack on Titan like that because again, I don't watch it. Um, it's cool. I, I, I like the premise of it. It has some um, from the seasons I've watched. It has some cool moments. It's just I mean, everything ain't for everybody. It's just some shit. I'm just not. not about what's, the, what's the last thing you seen? Because the part where they start shooting niggas, I'll admit that's the probably last part I seen is from what I remember. They okay. So season one is when. 
it ended with them like approaching the edge of the island in the water. Oh, and shit. And season damn. two, season season two. I guess they find the city or whatever. But a nigga like me, because I don't give a fuck about the show, I'll wa- I'll go on YouTube and I'll type. I I watch the fucking timeline of yeah. yeah I, I watch. So I'm caught up. I know for I, I know that uh Aaron's mom was eaten by I guess. His oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or all that extra shit. Like I know the intricacies, and I'm keeping up with the story. I know, I know Jaeger has a fucking heel turn, and this nigga goes from hero to villain. <laughs> the and all greatest that. heel yeah, turn. I, I, I know. <laughs> I, I keep up with it because I don't watch the show, but I, I want to keep up with the lore for the most part because the story is cool. I. Just didn't season care season to watch two is shit. very boring because when I watched it the first time, I didn't like keep up with it. All the way to, to to the point where I was updated. I think I stopped at season two too. I don't know what it is about season two, but that's where I stopped too. So I have to it pick travels. it back up like three years after some shit. It's too focused on. I want to say if I'm thinking of the right part of the story, it's too focused on them moving and not nothing's happening. And I'm not gonna lie, you could be a casual, you could be a nerd dog. If ain't action on the screen or like plot really happening on the screen, and you're just telling me what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get bored. And yeah. I, some niggas stuck it out, some niggas don't. Mm-hmm. I don't hold you. My 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 YouTube. Like if niggas see my YouTube homepage, they'll be like, "Yo, damn, what the fuck?" It's a lot of fucking uh, new rock stars and timelines of X, Y, and Z. Like no, I like the shit. I watch it. I, yeah, I don't never get over your when I go on the the new rock stars binge. Every time a good Marvel movie comes out, I be going crazy, man. I ain't oh no, lie. I'm, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm bad. I'll see like new uh fucking Loki episode eight season two just dropped. I'm like, oh well, what? I'm not gonna watch you yet, new rock stars. Let me go watch the episode first. <laughs> Yeah, right when that shit done, I get my girl to remote. All right, watch whatever you want, babe. New rock stars. Let's see what I missed. Let's, <laughs> oh, let's see what I didn't pick up on. What and happened in episode? Yeah, type shit. No, I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm bad with it. I ain't gonna hold you. Well, Keep. this isn't even just uh cartoon or anime related. And I'll let you go after this, Omar. Do y'all funny enough, do y'all like characters that are like outgoing and like tell you what they're going through and all that shit? Or do you like implication? Because I think it depends. That, it, I think it depends that, on you know, the anime. It depends. Well, not even just, just anime. It depends on the show and how everything is set up. If that's the premise, if from episode one, season one of the show, that's how everything is. All right, then it's established that motherfuckers are just gonna give you the ultra dialogue of the plan and what we're gonna do. But if it's a show where it literally breaks things down, builds up, you see the progressions, the regressions, and all that, and then you got a character that just comes out and pulls a freezer or cell. All right, nigga, I don't like this. Like no one does this. <laughs> Now this right, nigga's breaking right. down the fucking story. Like he, he's breaking out his plan like a 007 villain. I don't like it. That's that's nasty. Okay. So if it's not normal in the story or in the writing, I don't like it. But if that's how you establish your show is at um live action or fiction, I don't mind it. If it's yeah, I, I wouldn't even talk yeah. just anime. I'm talking in general. Yeah. I, th- I think uh Damo said it. I I don't I don't know if it if I'm just interpreting it differently, but I think it just depends on like the serious the serious level of the show. Like <laughs> I, the the seriousness and the the Themes that I'm expecting from my hero is completely different. Completely different from when I watch Attack on Titan. Like I'm, I'm looking for some more lighthearted shit when I watch my hero, and then when I see Attack on, like I'm, I'm looking for deeper meanings, type shit. You know, so. Yeah. Can we get back on brand, please, and talk about basketball? <laughs> um, going, actually, man? actually, actually, before we get back on basketball, I have a question I want to ask everybody. Uh, uh, something I, I want to ask. We're not gonna get these clips out. God, I want to talk about basketball so bad. Go ahead. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, let let me, let me just ask, what makes someone a superhero? Oh, <laughs> um, like to you, what is your definition of superhero? Sage, go ahead because you was already talking. Damn, I was not ready. I was thinking. <laughs> uh, okay, anybody, anybody. Uh, your, I want to hear everybody. What the def? What is your definition? Of a superhero, I'm not gonna look at chat. Su- look at supernatural, it. out of human powers. I feel like that's mm-hmm. a. So Batman isn't a superhero to you. Stop, Omar! Stop! Just answer questions. Stop doing that. Stop! 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 You want too far ahead? Stop. I think a superhero is someone who is like so absurd, so so outgoing with the good mora- good morals. Is that the word? Mm-hmm. So so, abs- so outgoing and absurd with good with taking action towards good morals that they're willing to fight for it and or die for it. Probably. Mm-hmm. Omar? Uh using their good conscience. Shouts out to the milkman. Got the milkman for the five gifted. <laughs> He's on fire. Uh, some, somebody who uses their powers and or abilities to impact the world uh in a significant way. 
So even if you're like a super cop, you're a superhero to me. So you feel like, so in this specific with Omar, you feel like there's no difference between a hero and a superhero? Um, A hero and a superhero. Mm-hmm. It depends on how much impact that you're having on the world. Like, literally, fire, firefighters can be heroes, but when you're firefighter man, and, and you put out the whole California, you. yeah, you shit. put out the whole California wildfire by yourself, that makes you a superhero. Um, but again, even if you're just a regular firefighter and you travel the world um, in 24 hours putting out fires or whatever, that that can also make you. A super hero. In your opinion. Okay. So now that leads to my next question. Let's play a quick round of superhero or not. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> I knew this was coming up because I'm like, all I right. Wanted to, yeah. I wanted to ask everybody's definition of superhero. All right. And now let's play superhero or not. Okay. All right. First things first Captain America. Mm, no. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a mm-hmm. casual Marvel. Fair warning. Uh, yes. I'm a casual though. Okay. So. No, yes, Omar? Yeah, superhero. Okay, yeah, he so is. why is he wait, why did you he say? He got no? a serum. Like he's legitimately supernatural, right? Like he got the super yeah, soldier he serum. Super oh, you gave yeah. him a what? <laughs> you gave him the serum souls? <laughs> Crazy. All right, all right, yeah, all, right, all, right, all right, all right, all right, cool, cool, cool. The flash. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. Super. I, I, was think, I was thinking the nega flash. I damn, I don't know. Flash. Nega flash? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> nigga Flash is nigga Flash head ass. Uh let me go ahead and let's <laughs> uh, uh, uh yeah, gunner, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Now let's get to the meat potatoes. Batman. Jesus Christ. Hey yo, the, the Beast Wars' definition, no, but I think yes, of course. Time out. I don't know when it happened, Damn. but this there's this one creator I haven't learned from this your name. But this nigga has flooded my algorithm and him just beating people's asses for like bullshit reasons. Like you, you parked on the fucking uh, you parked in a handicap spot. Come here, and he just beats the shit out of the nigga. And he's talking, I about, exactly talking I about. I don't know why the fuck that shit's all over my TL. That's crazy. Um, does he not I, know like every martial arts thing, like style? He, he, or whatever? he knows martial arts. Cool. He just know no, but if he knows every single martial art art style, that shit. Hero. But also, I don't so think that's that true. at that point. So does I UFC know fighters. So so John Jones is a fucking. Does superhero? he is he a master of every single fight style? That sounds like a he's superpower a to me. Lot. First yeah, of all, not I everything. Think, I don't think Batman is the master of every yeah, single. Yeah, I'm about to say. I don't think I, that's true. I don't think all right, he's the well, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. If he's not, knows martial arts. I think Batman just knows martial arts. Apparently, he does. Chad said he does. Batman could easily learn it. I don't know if he actually does. I only know some things because I'm a nerd. And I is he? He is? Blank or blank. But, uh, Regardless. All right. All right, then. That sounds like a superpower to me. <laughs> that's not a superpower. Learning every If you know every single martial arts, that's, that's a superpower. Not a superpower. What the fuck? No, that's not a superpower. <laughs> all right, bro. What? <laughs> Learning every fighting style is a superpower? Every yeah. single one? Yeah, no, no, no. Superpower? He doesn't, but he doesn't yes. know. But he doesn't know every single one. He doesn't know every single one. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, I find he's not bright. He's yeah, a rich guy up. with plot armor. God, is that what you want me to say? I think wow. he's a superhero, by the way. Okay, but... so let me ask. Let me ask. What makes him a superhero, Sage? And Omar, because y'all both said yes. Um, so, what makes him a superhero? I mean, not to be a dick, he does have like, like super strength and speed and shit. Just not like Superman implied superman but like he, he beat your ass um on top of it um i think he has his own level of like weird hacks like you know how everybody says oh if with prep time batman can beat x motherfucking y motherfucker i think that counts as a hack um it's that's what, my, that says ass. that says virtually and how did you google it does, does batman, batman know, know every, every martial art I knew it. Oh my god. He knows virtually everyone, which means it's, it's a hundred and it's a hundred and twenty-seven is, is what's like commonly said. He knows hundred and nineteen. So being he a master of no, 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 hundred and twenty no. No, 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 I'm saying he's a he's not not even not a not a master. It's not a master. He knows one hundred and twenty seven uh versions of ma- martial arts. There are like thousands apparently of uh versions of martial arts in the world. Hey. That doesn't but make I, 
Go that ahead, ties man. into my last thing. He's just it, he's already a physical fucking monster, even if he's just peak mm-hmm. human performance thing. But the the amount of resources he has and intel he has, from my personal definition of what makes a superhero mm-hmm. and what he fights mm-hmm. for, yeah, he's a superhero. Okay, so let me ask. Do you believe MMA fighters are superheroes? Like Kevin Holland, yeah. hold on, hold on. Kevin Holland has stopped crime. Like Kevin Holland has seen niggas yeah. robbing people or doing some wild shit, and he stopped them. Put them in a the guillotine, wait for the cops to get there. There's been UFC fighters who have stopped crime. Are they superheroes? Because UFC fighters, they're not Batman doesn't have superhuman abilities. He's just the peak of human ability because he trains so hard. UFC fighters are abnormally strong abnormally fast they're the peak of human ability especially when it comes to combat are they superheroes well, it, now it, it, depend, it depends also what you're fighting for too so um he hasn't like you could be if i'm getting jumped in a parking lot and john jones just won v fours the niggas that's beating my ass he'll be my hero for the day but i don't mm-hmm. think he's a superhero worldwide type shit but when batman is saving entire cities potentially countries yeah that nigga's superhero Nigga said, could Batman survive D-Block with prep time? Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, right, last one. Last one, last one, last one. Is, uh, with that, what y'all just said, cool. Now it's Iron Man a superhero. Fuck no. Oh, mm. y'all niggas evil. 100%. So, so, so Jeff saying, Bezos no. with some bop in it. That's hey, right. Elon yeah. Musk with parents. I mean, with no parents. The only Rex reason is. this universe is alive. Okay, <laughs> good job, Jeff Bezos. He's a nigga with good morals. I don't know what, <laughs> what makes him a superhero. What makes Iron the, Man a the, superhero? The you magnitude, can't even use the argument the, for Batman of, oh, he knows 200 versions of martial arts and he's super strong and fast. He's none of that. He's the a magni- nigga with money. The magnitude, the magnitude, eh. Hey. Don't we scientists the nerd. magnitude the magnitude in which he um <laughs> used his good or his powers good morals whatever you want to say money intellect or whatever the magnitude to which he used it to you know do for the greater good makes him a superhero in my opinion mm-hmm. 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 i'm seeing people saying back into reality oh my god this nigga sage i'm seeing people saying his intellect makes him super he has superhuman intellect so chat y'all would agree that you know the top five percent of scientists have superhuman intellects then yeah y'all would say that right like no the, i think this is on a, well i would say it's on a different level but you're asking is peak that. human intellect superhuman intellect I say, yeah, super means you surpass human intellect so these guys so the the top five percent of scientists the top five smartest people on the planet they would have superhuman intellect. They would. Yeah, yeah they're what, they're ninety nine overalls, yeah. but superhuman would be like a one hundred five overall type. But shit. what makes them what makes them not heroes is what are they doing with it? Iron Man. That's fine. No, what are the what are the uh, the peak the human intellect scientists? Yeah. What are they doing with it? Oh, probably making that weak ass glove. They ain't got they ain't got Infinity Stones. <laughs> and hey, this weak ass glove for ninety percent. Who who your guy? No, I give you that, Omar. I give you that, Omar. <laughs> my guy got and prep time. I, oh, Omar, my. I give you that, but I feel like that would be the difference between a hero and a superhero. I believe anybody, honestly, anybody can be a hero. Doing the right thing, uh, always wanting to, to help, save, all that extra shit, that makes you a hero. I feel like the actual inherent, either given, God-given, birthed with, or because of some mutation or experiment or tragic accident gone wrong, when you get superhuman abilities, that's what makes you a superhero. Now, I do agree there are probably levels to hero. I'm not, I would think Batman and Iron Man are both heroes. I don't think they're superheroes, but a simple fact, bullets can take them niggas out. So I was gonna I was gonna say though, but I mean that that that's a bullet can take Superman what? out. Bullets can take Superman a out. A special bullet can take Superman out. A regular bullet can kill Batman. <laughs> a regular that's not true though. His his suit is his suit is bulletproof. I'm about to say, I don't even think... If Batman takes the suit That's off... That's not him. That's the suit. Thank you. Thank you. If Batman and Iron Man takes the suit off... But he doesn't... But he's not, not going to take the suit off. And you can say that same thing about a lot he's of Bruce people, Bruce Wayne. Though. He doesn't have the suit on. He's I don't Wayne, think Wonder... I don't think Wonder Woman is bulletproof. What? I don't think Wonder Woman is bulletproof. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, Wonder Woman isn't bulletproof. It's yeah, she got those, those she wrist got the, she things. Got the, she got the thingy things. If you take the wrist things off... Actually, no, she is bulletproof. Yeah, she is. Oh, Chet saying she is. I don't think that. She she is bulletproof. Take no, Wing Lancer drink. Is he bullet? Like, and I'll right. say this. I'll say this. Niggas, niggas is about to uh, dick suck and pull up. Oh, well, in Universe eighty nine ninety nine. I don't. I don't think she's a, she's not bulletproof. Oh, at, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Look it up then. I'm pretty sure she's bulletproof though. She's a god. This. Um. 
I mean, yes. <laughs> he ain't bulletproof. That doesn't make him, him. But he has superhuman abilities. He has superpowers. He has superhuman strength. Yes, like actual superhuman. He can lift shit that even peak human can't lift. He has superhuman hey, abilities. Hey, and he can snap. And Toby, and Toby actually shoots webs. Toby shoots webs straight out his wrist, unlike all the other fucking Spider Man niggas want to argue for. He actually has the webs in his DNA. Like he actually. You don't think Tom Holland's Casper? So you no, don't think Tom again, Holland? No, he's a again, little boy. Yes. He's a little no, kid. No, no, no. Tom Holland again has super strength. He does not have regular. Batman don't got super strength. He's just a strong nigga. Tom Holland, Spider Man has super strength. It's it's different. I'm not gonna say super speed because Nick, like speedsters have super speed. Even though Spider Man running is definitely faster than Usain Bolt, but I'm gonna look again. Superpowers. I don't know about if you have powers, strong. you are a superhero. But plenty of people can be heroes, and there's levels to being heroes. I think Iron Man and, and Batman peak out of what a hero is. They're like ultra. They're, they're the peak of what a hero is. But you don't have no powers. I can call you a superhero, and I'm not gonna say just because you're smart. You you a superhero? No, nigga. You sound like a nerd. You smart money. Well, well, from I, Iron Man is classified as a super genius, and from I didn't Wonder, do Googles, but from All Wonder right. Woman's That's from Wonder a, Woman's Inception, uh, she she's not bulletproof. Now, if niggas want to talk again, if niggas want to talk about in Earth, in nineteen ninety six, yeah, no, it, yeah. but from Wonder Woman's very, Inception, she wasn't fine, but she still has superhuman abilities. She's still a That's fine too. Tony Tony Stark. Um, Literally has the nanobites in his system. Is that not a serum of some sort? Nanobites. I don't think the I'm nanobots. Say, I'm pretty sure he has two. some nano shit. If he was oh, the nanobots in his no, system, but I'm not. I'm and not I put it in him. I mean, hey, that makes yeah. you cybernetic. Well, aren't you talking about like a specific universe at that point? In, no. no. Well, that's the one that we know. Like that's the main one that we've known. But, but even no, no, no. But even with Iron Man, he put the fucking chest plate in him and the nano yeah. shits. That that's canon. That's that's Iron Man. If you want to go there, because cybernetics. Cool, because I think Cyborg is considered a superhero with his cybernetics, so that's fair. That's a fair shot. I, I'll give no, I'll give no, Iron Man the nod to Batman. Yeah. Batman no, is no, just no. a nigga with he. I, he's emo Elon. That's <laughs> he Elon Musk with no parents. Like I don't. That's all, right. all Batman is to me. I'm yeah. I was saying Iron Man. Great guy. Sometimes I don't even know. No, no, no. Second rant. Let's stop going. Batman is a dick. Let's be real. <laughs> Batman's a dick. Oh, that's. Man. Batman I is trying a to dick. see. <laughs> and even if you want to go on different variations of the story, Batman is such a dick. And if I'm just sticking to injustice, I need people to understand: if Batman stood on business and wasn't such a dick to the Joker, the Joker would have never found the need to be like, "Bro, I got tired of losing to Batman. Let me go fuck with Superman, kill his wife and his kid, and ruin the world." Never be a thing. If Batman just stood on business. And not niggas off instead of sending them to Arkham just so they could be released or they can escape and he can recapture them and put them in the same set they just escaped from and run this regular cycle, the world would be so much better. There is no coincidence that in every other world in fucking DC, you go there, it is bright, it is sunny, it's shining. What superhero operates a shithole riddled with crime? No one does that. Literally, Bat you go to Gotham, Gotham is known for its crime. They probably have the most crime lords out of any other major city in D.C. Why? Because Batman is a dick. He's a billionaire who goes around helping the world with his philanthropy. He's Mr. Beast with no parents. He's a philanthropist everywhere else, but leaves Gotham a shithole so he can run around as a cake crusader and beat up mentally fucking disabled people. <laughs> All these villains have some type of fucking schizophrenia. <laughs> they have, they're bipolar, schizophrenic. Some of these niggas, I was about to say they have arthritis, but they're autistic. Like, all these niggas got some ailment in their brain. Arthritis is crazy. Batman, yeah, that's wild. But Batman goes around beating them the fuck up just to let them get out so he can beat them up again. One versus and, 50 bat and, ring. This nigga just goes around gout, man. adopting kids. <laughs> He going around adopting kids to put them in danger. How many fucking orphans are you allowed to adopt? They just pop up missing. This nigga finds kids with no parents that resembles himself, gives them millions of dollars, and says, ah, hey, my man, God. put this speedo on and let's go fight the Joker. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck Batman. At least Bru at least Iron Man. Tony Stark does that shit dolo. He got the fuck. He, 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 he got, what's his name? He got Woody. I don't even think his name is Woody. Um, He got fucking you Jarvis. Know, no, not Jarvis. The nigga. You know what I'm talking about. Fox? 
Nick, no, that's bad. Nick Flash? <laughs> Nick Fury? <laughs> no, not Nick Fury. War Machine. You know. No. Uh, oh, it's uh, Rody, 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 Rody. 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 I said Woody. Rody. He has Rody. Cool. Other than that, this nigga's not going out here adopting fucking orphans to try to make them Iron Lad. Niggas had to fight to be Iron Lad. Nigga, like he's not. He's out here solo doloing. Let me make a million suits to protect the world. That's it. Batman is out here taking kid after kid after kid, watching them die, be beat, not like like crazy shit. Fuck Batman. Damn. Um. Blame it. Anyway, and for the for the person the person that was saying in the chat, uh, Superman couldn't fly in its inception. Omar, I don't know what that has to do with anything. He also had other super superhuman abilities from the beginning. But if you if you want me to say he couldn't fly for forty years, okay, he couldn't fly for forty years. I I don't I don't I really don't even know the point of what you're bringing up. Um, don't so, overly nerd it, Chad. It's not fun when you do that. Yeah. That's nerd of the pod. He's a fucking dick. Um. I want to get into this guy. Let's let's get back into some basketball, man. I, just, I don't okay, even know why. From me. Don't know why we went away from it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> if you want more anime content, subscribe to the TSO Sage channel. Yo, you know, not want to hear Yo, you niggas in the in the back are going crazy in the chat, aren't y'all? Um. <laughs> so we have this from Anthony Chang. Uh, LeBron says he'd still be just as dominant if he never went to the Miami Heat. Now this is coming off of him. Praising the Heat for when they played, and didn't the Lakers have an embarrassing loss there? We won't get into okay. that. Um, but yeah, LeBron says he'd be just one. Well, he'd be just as dominant if he never went to the Miami Heat. Um, LeBron comments and says, "You damn right, I would still be. I'm chosen. Ain't nothing changing that. Maybe less rings, but dominant from start to finish." Um, I ain't gonna lie, just based off of this sentence right here, maybe less rings. Look at Davis. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love you. <laughs> this this sentence right here, or this little part right here, maybe less rings. I'm ready for LeBron to retire. He's about to call out a bunch of niggas. He's about to that whole time I was on the cast, who's ass. That nigga Dan Gilbert is a bitch. Yeah, I, I'm ready for it. But I mean, how do y'all feel about that? I mean, you're right. I mean, that, that's a right statement, and him doubling down on it, he's absolutely right. LeBron would still have been best player in the fucking world had he not went to Miami. He just wouldn't have won. Like, that, that's fine. You could be dominant without winning. We've seen plenty of players be dominant without winning a ring. So, I mean, he's absolutely right. I don't think he said anything wrong. Just yeah. as dominant, though? Yes, just as dominant. I think he... Maybe not the same way. Like his perimeter game wouldn't have been the same. He wouldn't have been shooting as well or whatever it is. He wouldn't have went through that little training arc shooting with fucking Ray Allen. But his the physicals would have still been there. He would still been able to get to the rim at will. He still would have been peak athleticism. I mean, I don't know how. I mean, so a, a different type of dominance, but the same level of dominance. Yes, different type of dominance, okay. but still That's best cool. play in the world type of thing. I don't. Uh, I was well, I was just gonna say I, I don't even necessarily know if I disagree or agree with the maybe less rings part. If I go back to where um they said shit was gonna shake, I, he might not come to Miami, but if Bosch and, and Wade come to Cleveland, I know you still got it. It's a different culture in the heat. I agree with that, but they were still gonna do something different. Or they would have went to Chicago. And if yeah. they would have went to Chicago. I think that that's an organization that's decent enough to pull some shit off of what they got going on. LeBron would have still been pulling some strings and got the guys over there. Um, so just as dominant, and that was a team that already had some established pieces too. I don't, and I, I'm not going to talk about the Knicks because I really don't think that was ever a thing ever for anybody besides Carmelo. But yeah, if you would have went, if they would have came to Cleveland or if um, they would have went to Chicago and teamed up, I don't see too much different. I, and it honestly, maybe a couple more rings because as players start to fade, you know, other players start to step in. I think Jimmy Butler was on that team by then, right? Twenty like a rookie. Yeah, yeah. he, he wasn't the Jimmy Butler we know. So. No, 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 no. I know he wasn't the Jimmy Butler we know. It was just 2011. And well, it, he, it he was drafted in 2011. So when LeBron came in 2010, he would not have been there. No. Why not? He was, was, he, was he not drafted in the back end of the draft? Of the yeah. 2011 draft, wait, 
Oh what yeah, are you talking about? I'm tripping. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would assume. I, I would assume they still would like wasn't Jimmy Butler the last pick of the first round? No, no, no yeah, I, I got, I got. Yeah, yeah. he, he yeah, still yeah, would have yeah. been there. And I would, I can, and I think it's fair to assume with Jimmy Butler, that is a case of Jimmy would have went anywhere and been Jimmy. Like I don't mm-hmm. think he's a product of a system or product of oh because you played with or for. I think Jimmy and his work ethic and how he approaches the game. I think he would have been – he would have came into his own on that team. He would have found his niche and his role. Now, maybe he wouldn't have had as big as a role because you're playing under LeBron and D-Wade and, and behind Bron, D-Wade, fucking Bosh and Derrick Rose and Noah. Like, of course, you're not going to be the same Jimmy Butler. But he would have been useful. Motherfucker would have been a dominant-ass six-man, vital-ass six-man, hustle guy. He would have done everything you needed for him to win. He looked look like Alex Caruso, in my opinion. He looked like what Alex Caruso was to the 20 Lakers. I'm I'm looking at and I'll let Sage go after this. I'm looking at this roster. This is the 10 11. Um, of course, some of these guys wouldn't be here, but I'm just taking it for what it is. You've got young Derrick Rose, Luau Dang, Joey Kim Noah, Carlos Boozer, Kurt Thomas, Ronnie Brewer, Taj Gibson, Kyle Corver, R- Keith Bogans, CJ Watson, Omer Asik uh, contributed that year. It was, I mean, I, and mind you, this is a team that maybe they don't even take Bosch. Maybe maybe Bosch can't make it and they do it, whatever. This was the first seed that year. This is, this is MVP Rose that year. If he goes to this team with even just D Wade, um, I don't you take off whoever you want to say this person wouldn't be here or whatever the case may be, but I don't see why they can't run it off. Um uh, Derrick Rose's career might be looking different too. They draft Jimmy Butler, and that's a guy that comes in when Wade starts to starts to wane a little bit, and they do it there. I don't know. However you want to slice it, however you want to make it work. I think in Chicago, there. I mean, there might have been some extreme longevity in Chicago. To be honest with you, he might have never went back home. Yeah, um, it, it's it's fucked up. This conversation is fucked up because people have made it in a way where if you say he would succeed, you're somewhat. They, they try to imply that you're somewhat throwing the finger to Dwayne Wade or Miami Heat because the the whole thing that's been kind of overblown, but is that Miami taught LeBron how to win, blah, 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 things like that. My thing is, I think there's a certain level of truth to that, but at the same time, LeBron wasn't even debuting in the finals in Miami. He was in the finals in 2007. LeBron wasn't debuting in the conference finals over there. I think that whole... Um, yeah, Dwayne Wade in Miami taught LeBron how to win. It's a little overblown. I think the issue that happened in that series is, yeah, LeBron got got cold, cold feet, whatever fuck term is. But also he had he had pressure to defer to Dwayne Wade, who I know it's going to sound crazy to some of the young guys in chat. But at the time, niggas was doing the back and forth between Braun and Wade and Kobe and all them players that nowadays y'all wouldn't even consider. Uh, LeBron to be in the stratosphere of people was doing that with even like Dwight Howard and shit. So it so I think he just decided to defer there to answer the question straightforward. Uh, I agree with LeBron a hundred percent. Um, I don't know if he were to stay in Cleveland. I think the harshest situation you could look at it is LeBron is forced to stay in Cleveland, and um, Dan Gilbert and the same staff are forced to stay there as well. Then maybe yes, he doesn't win as many rings, but I probably even got a score to take. LeBron at some point probably just gets one off muscle of being that damn good. And 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 that's niggas ain't gonna hit it. LeBron gets scary good around the time that we're about to say, yo, he just won't win. He won't be dominant. LeBron proceeds to have 40% three point seasons. Nigga, 6'9, 260. Bro, look 280 out there. I know y'all three done seen LeBron in that heat jersey. That nigga was not 260. That nigga was at least 280, st- strong as fuck. Now, does he develop a post game, something like that? I don't know. But then I would say you're being a dick if I can't keep the agility. So you're just going to paint a worse version case LeBron and a worse version case system. No, you got to get, you, you can't have all of that shit. If he's going to stay in Cleveland, why would he change his play style? So at some point, I think LeBron 100% would speed blitz, get a ring, and uh, be a scary player. I think he would probably get even two. Um, I don't think he would retire and stay his entire tenure in Cleveland. At that point, you're plugging a controller into his brain. It's not the guy who he is. I'm with Omar. Um, outside of bringing Wade and Bosch, because I think that derails the conversation, LeBron probably just goes somewhere else and does the exact same shit, if, if not better. Because let's be honest, I love Wade. I love Bosch. They weren't the healthiest players. The, the Miami roster, if there's one mistake that Miami roster did, it stayed a little too old. 
it made the window a little too small. There's a potential situation where he goes to a younger team that's going to come up and he's great enough to drag them to a er, ring a year early. And then those talents get better and better and better. And now you made a dynasty. That's very possible. I, I want to, I do want to say this because I see niggas in the chat talking about, uh, so I said, could you imagine if lethal, lethal shooter trained LeBron? Some people in the chat saying, no, Wade and Wade and LeBron, uh, Wade and Bosch are still in Miami. I don't think y'all understand or, you know, listen to those conversations. This one, I just, I am just so happy to be on game with. It was a plan for them to be free agents all along. Yeah. There was a plan for them to be free agents together all along. And it was about where we're going and, and what we're doing or whatever. The the end up ended up being Miami because of uh, uh, money and because of heat culture. And so that's why they, they ended up in Miami. However, if, I mean, they were going to end up together either way, e- even if it was two, because it was, you know, n- not to be a dick uh, to Chris Bosh. Uh, I know who, we know who the the, the friend the main, groups yeah. of that 2003 draft class are. It's it's Bron, Wade, and, and Mello. Mello. Yeah. Um, so we know, like, which way it was supposed to go, which way it was, you know, headed and all this stuff like that. So they were gonna go somewhere together. It's not. It's not these two stay in Miami or whatever the fuck it is. It's we're gonna go somewhere together. So yeah, D Wade is coming. I, I hate to put it. <laughs> I hate to be like that to y'all. D Wade is coming, and even if it's just D Wade and LeBron in they Chicago, get, they get it done. Right? Yeah, they get yeah. it done multiple times over. That that's a that's a uh, an establishment that I think did fine. Uh, if you look at the Bulls for the next couple years, they they compete. Regardless, um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think this is a conversation that I think people have just taken way too literal. Cause like what o- Omar's point ba- is primarily based off of the fact of like going back to 2010. Realistically, what are the different options you could have went? But some of the shit that I've seen um, against the take is just on some like, okay, but what if you plop LeBron on the Charlotte Bobcats? Period. Point blank. Like he doesn't get yeah, any help. Put him in the worst, worst, worst situation. But that's what I'm saying. So like the the counterpoint would just be the extreme of the case, which I'm gonna be honest. If that's the extreme of the case, I mean, technically, it's on some. Uh, I mean, technically, if you, if you put him on the Bobcats, you know, we we'd view him differently. But you know, re- realistically speaking, Chicago was an option. Uh, I think New York was an option at that time, and yeah, um, it, it did seem like D Wade was just gonna come wherever the fuck he went. I don't. I don't I know if New, New York, York was, was an option. I think it's Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think New York was an option. But regardless, I'm. I'm just saying, like no, the, yeah, the yeah, options. Yeah, yeah. The options that he had were like legitimate options where either other stars were going to come to team up with him, so he can stack the deck a little bit better, or it was actually Miami. You know. So I wouldn't even say the third was Amari, but I, I could be. I could not be remembering that like a thousand percent correctly. But it was nah, Amari. Amari was supposed to be on the uh, Cavs. I want to say before the the big three merger thing. That mm-hmm. was like, oh no! What year? Either the year they got Shaq or Antoine Jameson or Ben Wallace. One of those years. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay. of, him, of Amari supposed to go in there instead, and they didn't pull it off. But when they were leaving, it was supposed to be. I, I look. I know it was going to be uh, Bron and Wade, and the options weren't this. Like he wasn't coming to Atlanta, guys. Like he just, he wasn't he wasn't going yeah. to Minnesota. That that wasn't the conversation. Um, it was it was the major markets in the East Coast, um, and that yeah, when I'm, that, oh my, no, I was gonna say that heat culture thing is real, but just being realistic, if they would have went to Chicago, like it it, it would have been what it been. Yeah, I just think I he'd will, be a different I'll, LeBron. I just think he'd be a different LeBron if if he didn't go to Miami. And I guess the conversation would be how effective would be how effective would a different LeBron be in different scenarios and how dominant. He'd be in different scenarios like that. The only argument I would give that is he could potentially retire earlier because if he doesn't go there, then maybe maybe he doesn't establish post game and all of that shit. But I think at the end of the day, you put LeBron in a losing system with a losing culture, he's going to get that same hit of reality of losing a high stakes game because LeBron James, even in trash franchises, was able to take you to a final. So at some point, he would run into the conference finals or finals maybe even a game seven, perhaps get that harsh loss, adjust to the lack of spacing on his team, adjust to the bad coaching on his team. And he'd still be a fantastic player. So I think no matter which way you slice it, LeBron James becomes LeBron James. The only conversation is 
well, what if that loss comes in 2013 versus 2011 so he doesn't have it? Then I guess he retires a smidge earlier. Maybe this year he wouldn't be playing basketball. But like that is that's the most I can give it. Like th- this, the conversation, it, it, it it's just a random way to take a dig at LeBron. And I know I'm usually PC Sage here, but stop. Man, if he goes bad to nigga. Chicago, he's a better bad LeBron. nigga. LeBron is running it up, no regard. If he if he goes to Chicago, he's a better LeBron. I'm not. I don't I'm, think so. Now LeBron Correct. in our latest 2K Sim Sage, I mean, that dude hey, is less dominant. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, hey! We got two LeBrons. We got an S tier beyond goat LeBron. And we got the worst LeBron I'd have never seen in my fucking life. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Did he still go to Miami? Or oh, you want me to spoil what happens for you? Just, oh, I mean, just that part, like where, where he LeBron went. Specifically, LeBron specifically, LeBron is a slut. <laughs> LeBron, LeBron is a slut. Two years and one year's out the ass. First round exits every and year. And I'll say, I'll say this is my spoiler for the video. Curry does something crazy when you least expect to be sold. Like second to last year of his career, Curry does something wild. Does I think something. LeBron playing on the tip of though, it m- might hurt his career more than helps. I think LeBron being forced to play 49 minutes a night <laughs> does not fare well for who LeBron James is. This is an interesting conversation because on one hand, I agree. I think he might retire early. I think um, he might even take a hit offensively. And most importantly, God damn, he'd be pissed. But on the flip side, yo, you telling me in 2018, LeBron's still going to care about defense? I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of a crazy I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I don't think he stays in Chicago. Comedy? I mean, LeBron was already playing high minutes. Why would he? Why would he? I don't know. Why no, would he stay or why would he? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. And maybe I need to see the defensive ratings for the second best team. Because remember, Chicago had the best defense in the league that year. Adding LeBron and D Wade. Um, I'm I don't not, think there's the 2011. They win. I don't I'm, think there's the 2011. I, I'm not going to lie to you. They're, they're not going to play 40 minutes. Or he, he's not going to play extended minutes because they're going to be blowing the fuck out of teams. Yeah. But like even this, if they did, uh, LeBron played more minutes in Miami than Chica- uh, Derrick Rose in Chicago, anyways, in 2011. And and that's why I'm, I don't play more minutes than everybody on the Chicago roster. Especially if, if they have depth, no, I think. No, he's saying did he? Have, did oh. I'm saying in 2011, did he average more minutes than all the starters in Chicago? Because Tip because Tip is Tim. known for running niggas high minutes. No, so, I I understand yeah. that. So in 2011, LeBron averaged 38.8 minutes a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the Chicago Bulls, who led them in minutes was Lou Waldang at 39.1. So, and I can, and let saying. me see LeBron while he was in Miami. Did he can how long was he playing the high minutes? Or well, he played the high minutes the whole time, basically 38, 37, 37, yeah, 37. High minutes. And it ticked down. Um, I guess, mm, yeah, he, still, I guess he led he's the league in minutes in 17 and 18. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to play. Uh, uh, I, I was a, going out. a lineup, a lineup of like D Rose, Wade, I mean, Dang, LeBron, and Joe Kim Noah. Like, come on, bro. Nobody, nobody scoring off the bench. on this shit. Oh. Nobody's scoring on none of that shit. Um, and even as again, I know that's not like the perfect plop them on there. You can tweak it however you want. I don't think they're going to be as gutted. Now, what I remember, Miami was like not good before LeBron and them got there. That was, I think, that was the year that Miami before they, they got first round exit. Yeah, yeah by, by to the who? The crack, but they to the who? Can we talk about it? Yeah, yeah. First, <laughs> first. No, I don't think. I don't think they lost to the Celtics. I thought they lost to the Hawks. Yeah, I thought it was 10? ATL. 10, 11? Is that not Josh Smith East Bay year? Or that's 9 10, I think. Are you talking about the Heat before they got LeBron? Is that what you're talking? Yeah, about? yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah In two thousand nine and ten, they lost to the Celtics. They lost to the Celtics. Okay, that's fine. I mean, they were, they were they were they were first round exits. Um, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. First round, they lost four one. They they just weren't a good team. Like this roster wasn't even near any type of good. So if if you slot LeBron on that uh, on that uh, Chicago Bulls roster, even if they have to get rid of some of these guys, I mean, to be honest, they don't have to get rid of young Derrick Rose because that's young Derrick Rose, right? Not not a high contract, none of that stuff. Yeah, I they think he's on his rookie deal. Rookie but my question would be if you put him – you because I've had this conversation before, but if you put him and D-Wade specifically, let's say Chris Bosh 
go and make it to Minnesota, whatever. But let's just say D Wade and LeBron mm-hmm. go to go to Chicago. They they just go to Chicago. Are we assuming that so we're gonna assume Tibbs doesn't go through the philosophy of running niggas high minutes? So now Derrick Rose doesn't get hurt and Wade doesn't get hurt, like they're not running to the ground. We're gonna assume for the first that? two years, I'd say no. For the first two years, I'd say no, because the Rose thing isn't necessarily dick suck or anything. He quite literally would have no reason to be running to the ground. And even if they were trying to, you could just argue that LeBron would have the ball on said play or whatever. So I think Derrick Rose more than likely is healthy. Uh twenty twelve. I don't think Wade's knees were too much of a concern. Now, 2013 and 2014, I'm playing Xenoverse at that point. And I would argue that Wade's, Wade's knees might be worse because, <laughs> goddamn, he's in the Tib system. But uh, the first two years, and that's why I don't think a 2011 happens, nah, health health is not a concern. I, um, if you're going to re- replace knee Wade with primer Derrick Rose, Jesus Christ, um, and then you're telling me mm-hmm. that you got defense around that roster? Nah, that that bulls. Let, now, now let me tell you, let me tell you, because I don't think because no one remembers. And let me let me go ahead and be the go guy ahead. to brighten everybody's memory. Derrick Rose's injury happened in the playoffs in yep. the fourth quarter with a minute left, and they're up double digits. Yep. So mm-hmm. assuming that the same thing plays out, I don't see why we're sitting Derrick Rose in a playoff game. When it's a twelve point game and one minute remaining in the playoffs, I ain't facing him. I, I said LeBron. No, no, no. no. I said, I'm saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. I still see a world where Derrick Rose is. St- they're still playing higher minutes, and because I don't think this is going to be a deep team, like Omar said, you might not have to get rid of Derrick Rose, or Jimmy Butler, but other pieces got to go. So and I'll, and I I'll still say, see a world where Derrick Rose is still on the court, where mm-hmm. he and I'm air quoting doesn't need to be, but Derrick Rose is still on the court. And I think it's fair to assume he would still get injured in a situation like that. You're, it was a simple hop step move he was trying to do. That could still happen. D Wade body breaking down had nothing to do with the minutes he was being ran. It was the fact that he already had injury is, issues in the late 2000s. Damn, from the 10s, he was already getting hurt. So his body already was going to break down. So even if you want to put him on 25 minute minutes restriction, his body is still going to break down. I still see a world where Derrick Rose is breaking down, Wade is breaking down. LeBron is still going to be forced to leave like he did with the Heat. I just I just challenge that because if LeBron signs there, I don't think they move exactly the same. That that'd be that'd be another thing. If Fair. LeBron actually signed to Chicago off of yo, what the fuck is going on? If Wade signs to Chicago off of yo, I just averaged 33 on 50 40 and got home in five. I don't think that that coach would then simultaneously be up 20 or 25 because we give them the benefit of beating their ass that game and be like, there's a minute left. Get in there. You know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I don't think. And I know I know he's Tibbs. I know y'all going to try to gaslight it. But I would argue either one, LeBron had a ball two, potentially Wade has the ball or three. Yeah, different mentality, different Tibbs, maybe, because God damn it. You sign LeBron James. I don't think he's just a uh, uh, NPC. At some point, shit would shit would change. Why? Why? Why, why did Why did Derrick Rose miss so much of the that season? The, the twenty eleven season. Yeah. Oh, it's ACL. No, 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 no. He played the first year. He played t- uh, 2010-2011. and then eleven twelve. What was the reason? He missed a he missed a good bit of that season. What was the reason? Do y'all remember? Oh, I know it was on and off. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure why he missed all that time. Can't, I really like, can't remember. But what, what I'll what I'll say, um, since because uh, I know he had the big, of course he had the big injury in um, uh, which of to uh, the playoffs or whatever. But he missed a good portion of the season. All, all I'm gonna say, Damo, is in the the idea is just just that he doesn't. He has less wear and tear. Like I think, obviously, I don't think he'll be. Uh, MVP D Rose. I think he'll be a, a quality player, though. Yeah, um, that's a fair point. He won't. And be. I and I think I think that it'll just be less responsibility, less wear and tear um, on his body as a whole. Freak accidents happen. Uh, I'm looking at some of his injury history throughout that season as well. I see a a back spasm in February that made him miss five games. I'm seeing the ACL tear and the uh, playoffs right there, but I'm also seeing a strained knee. Had him missing 12 games. I'm seeing a sprained right ankle, missed a game. Uh, sore right foot, missed some games. Sprained left big toe, he missed some games. So those are the times where he was just in and out. But I just mm-hmm. see less wear and tear 
Damn, on Derrick Rose. God, I was I was oh. praying our chat was more sophisticated that, to bring up spacing on this team. God damn it, y'all y'all in this spacing shit. But y'all, y'all, Dom will go ahead. Yo, I'm about to say you started watching basketball we'll yesterday. Yeah, like, you know, damn, damn. you ain't wait. LeBron James, you came Noah, LeBron, and the fucking Derrick Rose. God damn, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Man. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I hate to be the chat guy. Spacing would have been an issue because if you're going to tell me LeBron, hold on, I'm, I'm saying if you're going to tell me, oh, Derrick Rose doesn't have to be on the ball as much or do as much with the ball, I mean, yeah, okay, we got LeBron James playing point guard. The fuck is Derrick Rose about to do now off the ball outside? Is you going to have Derrick Rose and D Wade cutting back door? This is crazy. And if we're so, and like Omar said, he and <laughs> hey, it sounds good. But Omar bringing up all the little tic tac naggy injuries with Derrick Rose being the main option. If we remember how D Wade and LeBron played together. Yeah, that shooting shit, you're right. They weren't worried about phasing because they were like this the entire time. We're going full court, sprinting, playing up and down speed. You add Derrick Rose to that, that's a threat. But now if we're talking about free accidents happen and the way Derrick Rose plays, I could assume him playing a up and down style with LeBron and Dwayne Wade. And now LeBron isn't just the benefactor of Dwayne Wade lobs. Now you have LeBron and Derrick Rose catching uh, Dwayne Wade lobs. There's still a likelihood of him still tearing his knee apart with how well, much. Not, he's I mean, well, 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 I mean the, okay. So I want to say the option two is things. there. I, I just, I just want to say this real quick. Yeah. Like the, the oh, yeah, yeah. in, in a that. different universe, I mean, the option is there. Like these things can happen, but at that point, you're just playing wheel of fortune. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's the best way to have injuries. That. He has weak knees. All right. Well, his knees one, are weak. one, one, one. Let's have let one. Let's have the conversation of health. Let's let's. I I I don't like doing this typically, but let's give health for the sake of because I'm I'm just on the spacing thing. I thought our community was more mature than this. So the idea that this team would suffer with spacing one, I don't even know is objectively true because yeah, hypothetically for 48 minutes, Derek Rose, LeBron James, Joaquin Noah and uh, Dwayne Wade on the court isn't the best, but you know, there's not only four players on that Bulls team. <laughs> Just like Good Lord. They had Kyle Corver on the team. They had Keith Bogans on the team. They had a guy like CJ Watson. The, the team could shoot threes, let alone Derek Rose would be a better shooter. And Luau Deng would be a better shooter because they're open because they, they're, they're just open now. They're not, they're not shooting pull-ups. They're not grading their shots. They're open players now. So I think for many reasons, let alone, to be honest, if we're looking at the competition in 2011, they get through the East regardless. Even if they're this awful shooting team that some of you will drag it out to be, they get through that. But, they get through that regardless. Who's and if not, it's really that bad, I, if them. it gets really that bad, bro, just trade D. Rose. I and, say, but, yeah, and mind I you, race, I, I, think, I, think, I think and this is why I hate having the basketball conversation with these niggas I, and – yeah, I know how y'all view me in basketball. Be a better shooter. I, I know how y'all view me when it comes to basketball chat. We're not talking about 2023. Thank you. We're not. God. We're, we're talking the year before. Uh, uh, look at the teams. Granted, the uh, well, no, I was about to say the uh, the Magic made it. The Magic did make it pretty far, but we talk about spacing like. This is this how is this a, all at the four was great spacing. That's what I. Thank that's you. what I'm saying. Like, shooting, shooting nah, middies, like, it, it wasn't just three pointers. It was mid range, and that's what I'm yeah. looking up now. How these guys, how guys like Derrick Rose, how guys like Keith Bogans, how guys like Jake, maybe Jake, a soul says it. Or, or, we're or, not or all fucking four of us say it. Four was good like, spacing. God, that's what damn. I'm saying. We're not. We're not yeah. talking about. We're not talking about no you need today's level spacing five out system or whatever the case may be. Trust me, these guys are gonna get it. And if if it doesn't make you feel better, this this team legitimately be like historic levels of defense, like 04 Pistons type defense with better offensive weapons uh than those teams. This would this would be such and and mind you, if you remember that the next year, was it the next year or maybe it was the the 27 uh uh win streak heat, how dominant they were defensively and in transition specifically. This is that team on like crack cocaine and steroids. Like I, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Better players, better coach, better defenders. To be honest, what are we doing? To Chicago? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I mean, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> hey, even if you cut you Derrick Rose Chicago, out of the dog. equation, it still makes so much sense. <sighs> cut Derrick Rose out of Hell Chicago. Decision, bro. Hell decision, bro. Hell decision. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I get what y'all saying. It's not obviously it's not Curry's league. So yeah, spacing isn't just three point shooting. But if, if there definitely were game plans for players like a LeBron James, like a Derrick Rose, like Russell Westbrook's back then, like Rondo's back then, guys who were perceived as bad shooters, 
the game plan was to let them shoot. And yes, to be fair, guys like Carlos Boozer was seen as shooters. Guys, they did have guys on their bench who were floor spacers. So I do give them the benefit of the doubt to be able to put lineups out there to space the floor. But if we're going to throw Derrick Rose, Wade, LeBron, Boozer, and Noah, if we're going to assume Boozer still stays there, which I don't, at that time, I think Boozer was a higher contract to get Wade and LeBron. You got to remove Boozer. But mm-hmm. and Luol Deng, but uh, we're just gonna play Magic Wall and just. Well, they didn't even have a, but they didn't even have a high payroll technically, Damo. I'm looking at it right now. Not, was Bo- I mean, again, was Boozer and Luol Deng not on the higher end of their payroll though? They they were, but the the Bulls still ranked 26 is what I'm seeing in payroll. And mind you, I would would have to really like dive into the contract. Yeah, but it, it's real semantic based. They're, I, they're again, re- I'm, I'm fair with just assuming that they're still there. I, I I'm all for keeping them there just to for 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 argument's sake and not having to dive too deep into it keeping them there i'm looking carlos boozer in terms of mid-range shooting i don't know what y'all deem as efficient when it comes to mid-range shooting but my thing is bro even i i just i just don't i don't want to say despise it but i think i i I think it's an irresponsible argument though because we could even just take a casual search on basketball reference which i just did and just go to the 2011 playoffs and sort by the team's three-point percentage any team that made it past the first round, these are the following percentages. Boston, absurd. Nine games on 46.5% from three. The Dallas Mavericks, who do go on to win the entire championship, they shot 39% from three. The next team is the Miami Heat, who shot 33% from three. They also what did they shoot from mid-range? Game. What did they shoot from mid-range? Okay, yeah, that's, that, that was the I'll argument get... I was going with. Because, uh, again, okay. it's not a three-point era. Spacing back then was what you shot for midi. That's why I looked at Derrick Rose mid-range. I looked at Carlos Boozer mid-range. I was looking at guys' mid-range efficiency okay. because that's what spacing was back then. If you had a uh, – like so said, Boozer was a spacer because he can step out. Shoot all, right, all right, let me finish my point, though. All right, so so you got Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta Hawks, 32. They, they went oh uh, – they they went 12 games. The Hornets don't count, but they, they're low there. You have the Memphis Grizzlies, 31%, the Thunder, 31%, and the Lakers at 28%. More than more seven teams, seven playoff teams that ma- made it past the first round were not even remotely considered good three-point shooting teams or anything like that. So I don't know why when we have these uh conversations, and granted, Damo's talking about mid-range, Damo's Damo. We'll address that when we about when we get there. But for majority of you guys, y'all look at these. Well, who's the sniper on the team? Not only do they have Kyle Corver, Keith Bogan, CJ Watson, other shooters on the team, but God damn, everybody don't need to shoot the motherfucking three, bro. Like Jesus, Jesus, bro, this shit's ridiculous, man. Oh, I, I did say Lakers. They they, they got packed up. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, I don't think saying. the spacing would be that bad, just because because uh, you brought up Rondo and Russell Westbrook, but I feel like even the spacing that Derrick Rose and D Wade provide is like in this conversation because of the era is, is being a little bit underrated. Is it not? If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You said what? Again, the, uh, I don't know what you would deem as respectable, or I don't know what would be deemed as efficient mid-range shooting, and I would have to uh, do it as relative to error. But I'm looking at Derrick Rose, who is shooting 36% from 3 to 10 feet, 42% from 10 to 16 feet, 40% from 16 feet to near the three-point line. And again, I'm not, I understand we're not talking threes, so I fuck the threes. What was facing back then, mid range jumpers? Well, we're Dwayne Wade all of the, I'm not saying Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade stamp, so we're not Dwayne even going to talk about him. That's fine. But the rest of these guys, I, I was just saying, my issue that I'm seeing is if we're taking a ball out of Derrick Rose's hands, what does that leave him to do? And now if we're just relying on D Rose to be slash and cut guy off the ball, I guess, but. I don't think I'm it comes to that. I think you can have Derrick Rose off ball on ball, and dare I say, you can have LeBron be slashing cut guy and get the most you get the most efficient player of all time in the season. You That's can fair. Have, yeah, you could also you could also have the idea that uh, hey man, they ain't gonna pull up on the mid range, but who you gonna check? There's one big. <laughs> there, there's two, you can you might have to throw two bigs down there, and if you're gonna live off off of us just shooting disgusting ten foot open of levels of spacing threes, then I right, bro. You got it. We'll see what happens. Play. But at the end of the day, oh. if we have Derrick Rose, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron James pressuring the basket at three different angles, it doesn't matter what you think. That ball going in that basket. And I don't know why niggas play pretend. I don't know why niggas act like certain shit matters more than it does. I was the guy that drafted Bruce Bowen and, and brought up defense and shit like that. And I'm going to tell you now. 
There ain't nothing you doing about arguably the greatest player of all time, one of the greatest slashers of all time, and one of the most athletic guards we've ever seen, all uh, pressuring the paint. There's nothing you're doing about that. Yeah, y'all, y'all can cheat. Y'all can cheat. Y'all I'm can sorry. sag all y'all want. I mean, these are these are some of the best cutters uh, in the fucking world. And then you have four guys who can initiate some offense because niggas act like Luau Dang when Derrick Rose went down. Thank you. Wasn't initiating the offense. So, I mean, the worst passer would be like Derrick Rose at that point because um, Joey Kim Noah himself could pass the ball as well. Like, I just, I don't. I don't know. And then, like Biso said, at the end of the day, like if we really we're semanticing it, but if we need to ship some guys out after it starts to get there, I, I think that that's like an easy thing. Um, Especially with Derrick Rose as the asset, you know, whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, point. I think that's an easy thing to do, and shipping any of these ask, guys out. And um, I always ask the final answer: if if by Lord means we're wrong, Omar, who stops them? Name, name the team that you genuinely believe would stop them. Yeah, even if you to answer that, San Antonio still. I think San, San Antonio, Antonio. I think San Antonio still presents the same issue. San Antonio is a threat, but they got to make it there. They got to make it there. You talk. I'm talking about 2011 and then 2012. So by 2013. The, Oh well, okay, fair, yeah, fair, 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 fair. Say, I'm just thinking of the totality of the the four years. My whole oh, was, okay, I'm about to say yeah, 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 my fault. But you're you're right. 2011, 2012, the Thunder not stop. If we're assuming the same teams come out the West, the yeah. Thunder not stopping that shit. Dallas and stop and Wallahi, I, I mean that Dallas defense was great. Let's see how great they really are trying to stop those three. That's fine. Exactly. But my. What okay? I was gonna but, say great. Oh, uh, great is but go ahead. I think I think I think it's more great than good. I'll, as I'll a team, say it's like they were great. Good as, plus. As team, I think it's good plus game. type. But shit. I I was just saying because it was brought up. Uh, I, I forgot who said it when we were up. Celtics but as a someone. Sports sports he, he just tried to debate me. That's why I started ignoring him. He's just <laughs> yeah, trying to debate me. Uh, but no, someone has said been high, bro. When I brought up, oh well, Derrick Rose is. I, I feel like he'll still be in the same situation because of injuries. Because of how everything panned out, I forgot who said it, but someone said, "Oh, well, the ball he wouldn't be doing as much. The ball wouldn't be in his hands." So that's what lead me to say, "Okay, if he's off the ball, that's where spacing becomes an issue." Because now, what are we doing with Derrick Rose? We're just going to ask him to slash and cut. I, I still feel like that'll present the same issues. But if the answer is, "Well, no, LeBron's going to be off the ball. D Rose will still be point guard." Yeah. I guess cool. I personally, even though it, it'd be fucked up as you want it, chat. I still see injuries being a key part to why LeBron. My whole overall argument was why LeBron would still end up leaving the Bulls to go to back to Cleveland or go wherever else. I feel like the situation would still be the same. Injuries. D, D Wade was already breaking down by 2012. By 2012, it didn't matter who the fuck gave him less responsibility. What the his fuck? knees. His knees were bad from the mid 2000s. He had surgery after college. His knees were bad. He was going to be hurt. But it's I just about D Rose staying. It'll just be about D Rose staying healthy. If D Rose stay healthy, does LeBron stay? Cool. But if I'm assuming D Rose is going to get hurt, LeBron is still going to be looking in the mirror at the end of the day in 2014. Like, all right, bro, these niggas is hurt and watched. I, what am I doing my career? But the but the the only thing that I would say there is the replaceability of those players because they had some people in the pipeline already, and I believe that. Miami did a good job adapting and stuff like that. I don't think Chicago is as bad. And I, I've heard things about like Gar Foreman and you know all these people, the 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 Paxons that are in the organization, all that stuff like that. But I I just don't believe with the foundation that they already have, um, and then how like we're talking about later later down the line slotting in and out people, because even if we're saying that D Wade gets hurt, Rose gets hurt. Okay, by that time, like later in that that run, if I'm not mistaken, Jimmy Butler starts to become better. I'm assuming that uh, what's his name doesn't go anywhere. Luau Deng doesn't go anywhere. We may lose, you know, some big men, but we're transitioning at that point anyway. Braun is playing a little bit more four. We can find us a little spacey big um, that can also play a little defense. All this stuff like that. So I I think that it's easier to slot from where they have in uh, uh, right there. So even in 2014. Let's say they, they win 2010, 2010-11. Uh, they, they win the next one, and they win the one versus four. So they three-peat, right? If they lose that next one, I don't think it's such a, I'm looking around trying to figure out what's going on. I'm looking around. Luau Dang is still serviceable. Jimmy Butler's coming up. Um, you know, whatever, whatever D-Wade is, whatever D-Wade is. But we've also made enough trades to not make me think, oh, I got to go find the next young thing, or I'm, oh, I need to get back to, uh, you know, 
Uh, I'm not going to debate you on this. I just got a question, Damo. So with the bull supporting cast, let's say you hit it on the money and that nigga, that nigga's destined to tear his ACL and then Nick Way's knees are destined to be bad with the supporting cast that was under contract to be in 2013 for the Bulls, which I want to say is more players than not. I didn't check. But um, do you think if not put the same roster, do you think that that team would get either 2013 or 2014? With LeBron being who he will become, Wade being who he becomes, I say Rose Le- still with LeBron still being LeBron, Wade and Rose suffering from injury, so the regression there. But the rest of the guys, so Jimmy Butler developing, Booz. Oh, I don't know if Boozer was still there or not, but just assuming the guys are guys, same team, same team. I think they, st- I think they still go one and one. I think the Spurs are just that great. I think the Spurs were able to take advantage of what the Heat were doing, and I feel like it'll be a very, in terms of offense. I feel like the offensive systems would, st- would be somewhat similar. Well, it'd be different because Chris Bosch isn't there to space as much because right. I, I can think we all can agree Bosch is a better spacer than Noah and Boozer. But Noah and Boozer are still spacers, and now you have a different type of point of attack with Derrick Rose. So it'd be different. I still think the Spurs can take advantage of it, but it's in the air. I do see them being able to win both. I do see a possibility where it's still one and one. The Spurs is the only team where I'm like, okay, they give them problems. Thinking about it more in 2011, if Le- I still think LeBron shits the bed in 2011. I don't think that's a heat thing. I think yeah, that's a, what right. Dallas did defensively. But now instead of Chris Bosh, you have a prime Wade and a prime Derrick Rose. So they can still win that. Now you you can ice LeBron if you want to. You still have fucking – you have to worry about Derrick Rose and Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade was giving and them they the guard, And they can guard yeah. Dallas better than the Heat. Yeah, team. so I, I still see them winning that one, so I can agree. It is a situation where they go three – I'm with Omar. It's a situation where they 3P and now LeBron's looking around 2014. I personally don't like the, oh, Jimmy comes into his own, so now we're starting Jimmy Butler at the three and LeBron at the four. Hmm. I, I, I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> I'm going to be a chat merchant. I'm still <laughs> spending like space. Yeah, I, okay. I'm still spending <laughs> space with that one. Jimmy Butler out there to be Mr. Defend and stand in the corner. He's P.J. Tucker with no three ball. That's crazy to me. <laughs> well, well, I, well, I get it. I, I get. I, I might I get be with you on the it's Jimmy Butler at that it's point in time. Team, the three point and shot. I don't. And I don't. We we we've been talking about this for a minute. It's yeah, a yeah, we yeah. But no, I was gonna say by that time, fourteen, fifteen. Because if you say okay, he's looking at the team or whatever. Fourteen, fifteen. Jimmy is literally a a most all star, most improved mm-hmm. player that that next year. Um, it's not like D Wade is just. I mean, D Wade is, in my opinion, garbage. But he wasn't. Uh, but we can have Jimmy at the two. And again, I think even at that point right there, it's less about finding so many guys to come and make it work. And then the salary stuff also makes it work. Because the way that I probably see it, and this may be a wrong way to see it, but I'm looking at Jimmy at that time and Kyrie at that time. And I'm like, man, these guys are pretty similar, to be honest with you. I know I get better defense from one. Yeah, I know that might sound crazy. I know that <laughs> might sound crazy. They're what, gonna what, put the pitchforks up on that well, one. Yeah, <laughs> they can they can go ahead. But to be honest with you, the guy that I think fits better, I know Kyrie hit the shot. And, ah, 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 shut the now fuck up. I agree. Up. On that team, Jimmy. Shut, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Because Jimmy Butler uh becomes a man that 14, 15 season and keeps keeps coming, keeps developing, keeps getting better as stuff goes on. All you got to do at that point is about making the transactions. And we can play a transaction game all day long, and I don't, I don't know if that's, like, a, uh, the best way to put it, but, I mean, the best way to do it. But I think that looking at it, nigga, it, it was still – he was going back to, what, Kyrie and Kevin Love? And who else was on that, that original team? Big Z? Like, who was he going back to for real, for real? <laughs> I will say – I will recant a little bit of my statements when it comes to the Jimmy Butler criticism. I'm looking at that 14, 15 year, second best shooting year in his career. So assuming on on three threes a game, which at that time I think is decent. Uh, so what was it? What was it? What was it? He was shooting. He was shooting 37 percent from three. No, how many? Oh, three, three attempts. The volume was low. Kyrie at four eight. Kyrie at four eight at 36. Like I'm again. I'm not seeing too much difference besides the fact that I know Jimmy Butler's a way better defender. Yeah, I mean, the roles would be a lot different and LeBron's game would be different. But like I said, I can still see that I was sleeping on Jimmy's ability to space the floor at that time because of recency bias and who I know Jimmy Butler is as a shooter now. Back then, he was kind of more dependable. So, I mean, I guess it works. Jimmy at the three, LeBron at the four. It works way better on paper than I was giving the credit for. We're actually doing my due diligence. So, yes, that could even work. 
I'm not going to say Jimmy Butler and Kyrie. You, you get the same thing. I'm not saying that. I, in terms of importance, yes. In terms of an important young piece next to LeBron, absolutely. And what they're doing, totally different. You, you, you're getting yeah. again importance. I feel you, but in terms of what you're getting, totally different. And you—that's what you meant. I'm, I'm being nitpicky and some. Yeah, yeah. Right? LeBron so. should have went to Chicago. A lot of niggas should have went to Chicago. Went to Chicago. Yeah. A lot of niggas should have went to Chicago. In conclusion, Lord. LeBron might be sitting with six right now if he went to Chicago. And, and I tell yeah, you, yeah, so I didn't ask you. You think he goes three and one, four and zero, two and two? Um, from from which years? Eleven to fourteen. Eleven to fourteen. Eleven to fourteen. I think he loses one. Either that's the twenty fourteen or or twenty eleven. Mm. I think one just one of those one three of those three teams people. is just gonna have like a historic. No, you just got outplayed. Not on some like yeah, it will happen. Choke I do think yeah, he'll lose a game just because the other team was just randomly great. I do. I don't believe in two K league ideology of hey, this team's supposed to just win for ten years straight. That's not gonna happen. They're gonna lose. Yeah, it's, not, it's not gonna happen. I ain't gonna lie, Damo. It, it, hey, I'm. I'm. We gonna get off it. If you look at that playoff series, because they played each other in the playoffs, fourteen, fifteen. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Butler Chicago outplays. Won. Yeah, and outplays Kyrie. Uh, even from like a shooting percentage standpoint, so uh, Jimmy Butler, uh, Jimmy Butler is right there with Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose twenty two, Jimmy twenty one. Uh, uh, Jimmy has six boards. Derrick Rose has five assists. Of course, Derrick Rose has him there six and a half. Jimmy with uh two and a half. Uh, Jimmy Butler is averaging two point three steals and uh, a block, but most importantly, shooting forty percent from the field and thirty seven percent from three on more three attempts than Kyrie, who shot. Uh, what is that? Oh, he shot forty-two percent from the three or whatever. But again, I, I but no, I'm just only. I was just gonna say, with, with I will say this though, I, and my contrary to what I was saying with Jimmy Butler, LeBron and D Wade on the uh, Bulls, Jimmy Butler doesn't become who he is. Jimmy Fair. Butler doesn't become Jimmy Butler because a whole the, the big reason why Jimmy Butler became the player he is as somebody is showing because he had to Fortnite, uh, opportunity. Yeah. Derrick Rose not being there gave him the opportunity to be that guy. Derrick Rose can go down as much as he wants. He getting that call. LeBron and D-Wade. Yeah, LeBron and D-Wade is there. So Jimmy isn't even given the chance, an uh, inkling of a chance to be the player that he was with just Derrick Rose not being there. So he steps up with Noah and and Yeah, yeah I can do that. So in that in Chicago only- for the yeah. chatters. Because I, you could Chicago. argue Wade mentor him, and then he leaves and becomes a better player. Sure. In Chicago, like at that point, we're playing a, a crazy game of butterfly effect. I get yeah, it. I get yeah. it. But, I mean, but yeah. it is, though. But- no, but I'm saying there's also a scenario where your scenario plays out. D. Wade and, and Derrick Rose still – you know what I'm saying? Get injured. Now Jimmy Butler is given that opportunity. So you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. He's given the opportunity. And and if we're playing Super Butterfly effect, let's be real. Xenoverse three. And, and in 2011, let's say LeBron does shit the bed, but Wade and D Rose carries. They going into offseason and thinking LeBron's hey, the third man. option. LeBron sucks. Not, not, even, not, even that, not, even that. not even LeBron's the third option. LeBron sucks. There's a there's a situation where I'm like, all right. We need to put the best foot forward around LeBron James because that shit happens. Yo, everybody on the bench, get the fuck out of here. No, I don't. Make space. But that means four. No, no, no. no. Even what you said, even what you said earlier about um, Jimmy Butler being just such a like afterthought. And even when he talks about his career, like when he was drafted, he was really just like an afterthought or whatever. I think, I think Wade vouches for him so hard being a Marquette guy. Jimmy doesn't go nowhere. And, Jimmy rises to be Jimmy. It's not like Wade didn't know about Jimmy. Wade would have been more more than on D Rose's dick. Wade would have been on Jimmy's dick. Like, oh yeah, he came from Marquette. He's really that like he's that guy. He's got that dog in him. Put him anywhere, Tibbs. And I, I'm telling you, as soon as Luau dang, oh, Omar, you're wrong because I don't know if you heard how Dwayne Wade talked about Jimmy Butler, but look, Dwayne Wade has said on record. I mean, Jimmy Jimmy was a cool dude, Marquette guy, hard worker. I didn't see that shit with him. Like I didn't see him being anything like what he became. I didn't. He he on, literally on he, the same team though. On the same the, team. He on the same team. I was still think. Well, I was okay. this. I, I, I can concede. I can concede and meet you in the middle and say maybe this motherfucker sees him in practice working his ass off. He's like, all right, you're showing me the hard work and you're a Marquette guy. I'll, I I can lend a hand. So I can concede there and say that. I can lend yes. a hand. I, I, I can I can put a little foot forward to really boost you up a little bit, you know, Norris Cole you. I, I can dead ass put that put that vouch in because I see you working hard. I can give you that. But Dwayne Wade did not give a fuck about him being more I get it, I get it. I get at the it, time. It. He was like, all right, this nigga Jimmy's a hard worker. I'm glad he went first. Hey, like in the words of Dwayne Wade, quote, 
Jimmy went first round? Hey, man, good for him. Good job. This is yeah, definitely a conversation. That's an overachievement for him. That's Trey going crazy, by the way. Yeah, yeah, Trey is going crazy. Trey, I, yeah, I'll apparently Trey is going crazy, and this yeah. will, this is definitely a stamp on the convo here. Would you rather 3-1 Bulls LeBron or just, God, any year Bulls Melo gets a ring? What the hell? Hey, man, I'm just saying. Some You're talking about Carmelo, like... right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's he's doing. <laughs> Trey is doing. Trey is on track like Giannis was because Giannis had twenty something, but they ended up losing that game. Also, mommy dropped forty four. I don't hit know. The more? Did he already uh, hit the game's already over. Damn, I have to watch it. Yeah, she so did go Chad, up. Against, she went up against the demon too, though. I ain't gonna lie. What was that was, about? I saw him typing that. No, because yeah, he had fifty, and then all right, oh. let's get these last two out of here. Um, I, honestly, chat, we going this long? This last part it was a little quick. And you know, I yeah, I feel bad. Man. This will make a pie because I feel bad, y'all. My fault today. I, I had a family emergency. Guy. Yeah, I <laughs> today I had a family emergency. Last part I had a technology really emergency. Him, yeah, nah, it, it's it's been a hell of you, hell of a week for your boy Sage. Thousands of dollars have been ah, uh, it's not fun. It's not the only fun time I've been able to hear Domo this week was on PC, man. Mm. I know three hours a day. Yeah. And we did ball here. Okay, let's get into something a little different. Just this last last couple of things. Last couple of things. Um another another anime to uh live action. We got the Avatar trailer. Can you bring up the Hawks trailer as well? Lower. Um I'ma just go ahead and start with a scorcher. Look, bro. I'm Nick. I get and one person in chat about a spo- about a spoil what I said. I get it. He is a 12 year old frozen in ice. Aang looks like too much of a joke. I'm sorry. He, he he looks too much. I can't take him seriously, bro. I tried to imagine this nigga frowning in the Avatar State. I, he looks too much like a joke, bro. Like just a little bit older, and I'd have fucked with it. But he looked too much like a joke. But outside of that, I mean, it should the shit this should look all right. It look all right. Um, the only two things I have apparently there's a uh, the writers aren't the same as the original vision they had when they first announced this. So I'm a little uh there. I want to see how they deliver the story. They purposefully did not show bending for mm-hmm. a reason. Mm-hmm. I, I was thinking the That's same true. thing. That we only seen the little fire comments. <laughs> That's all we seen. Man, yeah. that was gonna be a part of what I was gonna say. Yeah, go ahead, Dom. The reason they're not showing bending are right, three things. One, they didn't show bending. They did not show bending. They did not show bending. Two, Sage is right. That nigga does not that that looks like Ong. That is not Ang. That is Ang. <laughs> that, that is Ang for real. Ang. And three, I I will say I am more optimistic about this compared to the first one because after watching One Piece and seeing how the VFX was able to actually look decent with the One Piece with the with the powers and everything like that, I am more confident in the bending looking better because this is Netflix, right? Netflix is doing it. Yeah. Mm. I am more confident with Netflix doing this because I've seen them already adapt an animated live action and it didn't look absolutely dog water. Like, I watched One Piece. My girl was watching One Piece with me. I was actually like, okay, this is pretty solid. I fuck with it. I, I'm not as mad and I, I'm an anime casual. I'm not the, the fucking biggest One Piece guy. I, I am not the mini king of the pirates, I promise you. But I was not mad. I was not like, all right, bro, this is bullshit. Shit was cool. I'm just happy that they actually casted um, indigenous people to like play these parts. I'm so glad I did not watch white waterbenders, white firebenders, and then <laughs> Ong be fucking indigenous. Like everybody, everybody's white except for the indigenous Ong. Now everybody's indigenous, so I'm more inclined to believe this will be better. But I do think people are still going to bitch and moan about it. Oh, 100%. I think this is going to be exactly like the One Piece live action, to be honest with you. They, the goods and the bad of it. Because I think the One Piece, uh, watching it back, it wasn't a bad show. But translating it over compared to what One Piece is, which at least the way I view it, is a more of a lighthearted show. Like a lot of that lightheartedness and comedy just did not transfer over to the live action. Mm-hmm. And based off of that trailer and based off of what I know of Avatar and when I watched it, when I watched Avatar, it felt like a kid show. It felt like, you know what I'm saying? There were lighthearted moments. Um, it got serious at times, but for the most part, it's a, it's a kid show that's lighthearted. Looking at that show, uh, looking at that trailer, it's looking like similar to One Piece. It's taking itself a little bit too seriously. I ain't gonna lie. A little bit Are too you? Seriously. Can I ask you this? Yeah. Are you mad at that? What? Well, will you be mad at that? And the reason why I'm asking you that is because, 
Um, how how old were you specifically when Avatar came out? Because Avatar, when I was I, watching, it might have been like the reruns in the Philippines. So I don't yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think Avatar is more me damo uh, than anything. Avatar came out two thousand five. I was in. I'm gonna say I was in seventh grade. And I think you were in eighth grade when the movie came out. The live action. Two thousand five. You said no, not the live action. I'm talking about the original series. Oh, the, the series mm. came out oh five. Well, I'm, right. I'm like in in the Philippines, shit just comes out like hella late compared to when they come out in America. So when I first was introduced to it, it was probably oh seven oh eight. So I was like seven eight okay. years old. Okay, so we'll okay. we'll probably say uh, uh, youth because let me let me do the quick math on that. There's a reason why I'm saying that um 2005 and i should know how old i was well, i was i was that age i was that age because yeah, that's when i was like nine so i'm i'm saying that because you know that show came out it, the young jokes whatever for kids whatever the case may be um that happened when we were young mm -hmm. and now there were adults trying to relive the stuff when we were younger we can understand comprehend add more like real feelings or whatever so like the love scenes and the hurt you know, uh, uh, Zuko, where's my mom scenes. You kind of got to deliver that a little bit differently yeah. because it's not necessarily for kids of today. It's for the kids of yesterday of that grew up today. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, to answer your question, I'm not going to be mad because, again, with the One Piece shit, I was very, like, pessimistic on it going into it. But after watching it, it was just its own thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I really wanted that canon comedic, Mm -hmm. um value i would just watch one piece because it's right there so the, the same thing with this like if i really wanted to relive my childhood i'm gonna just relive my childhood you know what i'm saying so yeah I, I, i'm not gonna be mad as long as the story's executed well like there there is a scenario where like the execute just the, the story just isn't executed well so i could be mad for that but just because it's too serious um compared to what the original one would be i don't think i'm gonna be fully mad at it so yeah, you. In my personal opinion, with these live actions, they're lose loses. The best way you go about it is establishing your own identity and appealing to, as Omar said, the kids of yesterday. You're. It's not kids watching an Avatar. It you might get a couple, but it's gonna be twenty five year olds. They ain't got nothing better to do on a Sunday watching Avatar. Mm -hmm. So. I say that to say I I'm on the complete. Well, I don't even want to say opposite end because those didn't even apply that. I'm on that mindset, yo, you take it as seriously as possible. Your one goal is to adapt the story well. That's it. Adapt the story well. If you want Aang to be a goddamn serious-ass kid, go for it. But I think you can get away with him being a little goofy. But the idea of seeing real humans do cringe shit, people are going to call it cringe. So, yeah. Yeah, gotta... I'm, I'm going to just bring up a... Uh, oh, my bad. Finish, finish your point. I'm done. I'm done. All right. I was just going to bring up uh, the Minx Redeem highlight message. He says, live action... Has to be more serious because animation has more flexibility with physical comedy. One Piece has so much more physical comedy that can't be translated. And that's exactly my point with a lot of this live action shit. I understand those limitations. That's why I personally believe like we should chill down and chill out on the live action remakes. Because some some of the shit just doesn't translate because of the medium. You know what I'm saying? It has, it has nothing to do with acting. It has nothing to do with that. It's because of the fact that one is animated so you can pull off these certain shots. These certain, you know what I'm saying, character... Um, makeups that you just cannot because Alvita in One Piece, you can't make a real life Alvita without using CGI. It just doesn't fucking exist. So only only reason why I'm gonna disagree with you, and I, this was gonna be my next question. Uh, how do y'all feel about them going back and doing stuff? So there's a new Planet of the Apes movie coming out now, um, and it's supposed to be. If you remember the uh, 2000s Planet of the Apes movie, which was. What you said was with good CGI? I, I maybe I need to rewatch it, but it oh no no no! CGI. I'm asking you. Yeah, it it was pretty decent. They did a lot of practical effects to make them look more like uh, uh, monkey monkeys. Let me see if I have it. Damn, where where does it go? Is that it right there? But so they do a lot of practical effects to make them look like monkey monkeys uh, mm -hmm. in the thousands versions. Like this is this is how the monkeys look. However. You know, we now have better technology, so they don't necessarily have to go through this whole, hey, we're going to subject hundreds of actors to this level of makeup and do et cetera, et cetera. We, can have, we have better CGI now. And I feel like that's the same thing with Avatar. I'm not excusing M. Night Shyamalan because I think he did a piss poor job, but now they have better CGI technology. So do y'all have a problem with the now we have better technology? Let's go back and get some of the flops. So let's go back and get Dragon Ball oh, and doing them now. Solid. 
Ah, gosh. After this seeing what up. they did with Mortal, with the newest Mortal Kombat movie, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with going back and trying to redo some of these flops because you can do them better. I think the last Mortal Kombat movie was better than the one before that everyone said was fucking dog shit. That mm -hmm. everyone hated. I think it was better than that. Now niggas didn't like the writing for it and how the they, it had its issues, but in terms of okay, but yeah, in terms of how the movie was with the effects and the CGI and VFX way better than that. So yeah, I think you can go back and grab. I think we should redeem Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> Definitely make any anything better, anything better than that. You you can make any. We can get some fan made movies better than that. I'm all <laughs> for it. Be last man. That Dragon Ball Evolution. Look, 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 look. Uh, you all could be spitting. Dragon Ball Evolution got to be the last revamp. You got to get a resume showing me you ain't gonna fuck that up again. Dragon Ball Evolution is one of them ones in the worst way possible. I think that's the worst film to date, bro. I've seen negative tens. That shit's just a zero. Oh my god! But what if they could do it again with, you know, not the 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 writers, directors, of course, but like just essentially not better, better. Not yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna and I'm gonna and I'm gonna pull up to the 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 actors for this avatar movie because they i think they did a good job besides i mean i see what you're saying <laughs> sage i'm not gonna be that critical about the the yeah. ang jojo jojo did say they didn't even try with katara and and Sokka though which Sokka looks kind of crazy i ain't even gonna lie to you he does look kind of yeah, crazy I, I, i'm sorry look mm -hmm. i get they're not actually black in the show but god damn it they look black <laughs> so it's just like um it's a little throw off but i mean in general I mean, Cash look, Cash look straight. Ain't, just look way ain't do her like Ang and these. Shyamalan one. Like if you compare these to yeah, the M Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan, how do you say the nigga name? M Night. If you compare his fucking cast to this, this is drastically better. Yeah, this is definitely better. I Iroh's probably one of the best ones that I've seen. I we just have white and Omar. You, you said you said just remaking the flops. Right? This, yeah, like come on. Yeah, people. like way better, way better. I don't even necessarily I, mean. I think Zuko is the biggest egregious one here, and I know that may be a hot take, but Zuko doesn't look anything. I don't even think it's necessarily remaking the flops because I even like how they did um the Teenage Mutant. Ninja I watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the the, the most recent one that came out. I liked cartoon? it. Yeah, because it was a cartoon. It was in the for for those that don't know, it, or for those that are more familiar with, it was in the theme of like a uh, Spider Verse, that same sort yeah, of animation style. style. Yeah, so mm -hmm. like. I it, now we have the ability. Now we have this vision. Now this is a whatever. You know, I think that going back and getting some of those ones and redoing them isn't like the worst idea in the world. Mm, Cardiac I, is gonna I watch feel, this I, clip, so watch what you say. Oh my god, bro! No, I, I mean for the flops, I don't see a problem with it because it's more so like, okay, we messed up the first time. Let's try to fix it. But I mean, uh, I, 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 I'm not. I don't have a hard stance on this. But what do y'all feel about like a live action Miles Morales movie? Like into the Spider Verse, like uh, now that I think you you've opened a great conversation because I ain't gonna lie, fixing flops is a good step for this in terms of a it can't possibly have gotten worse. We've heard the criticism we're gonna ball. The inverse though may be a disaster and a pushback that you might never possibly recover from. Yeah, that's that's what I'm damn, saying because if it's um. If it's like a remake of the Into the Spider Verse series, like not even just a continuation of it, because there's rumors that they're gonna continue on with a Miles Morales, like beyond that. But let's just say they they remade the 2018 movie, but live action. How would y'all feel about it? But that? so so my thing about that is I think that that is a good goat. I guess a goaded movie. People have it in that standard, and it's also a part of a time in which technology is being used pretty well. I'm talking about a time where both things were like, you know, bad about the movie, the, from the writing, the casting, directing, all that stuff was bad. And the, the visual effects was also bad. So we're just talking about a different time. I think this, like that time that you're talking about is too new, but to answer your question, I mean, it would be, it, it would be stupid. Yeah. It'd be pretty dumb. It, as someone said, and I, I'm not the MCU guy. I'm definitely casual there, but I'm pretty sure. Don't you just put Miles in the MCU versus making a whole re-adaption of the past movies? Don't you just put a live-action Miles in the MCU and ball up from there? Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, listen, 
this MCU shit is getting out of hand. These niggas need to abandon this shit. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you are not from Marvel. I've noticed this that. Shit, you are not. It, from it's not even well, one. I am a DC guy, but bro, this shit is not. I ain't gonna lie. Again, shout out to Rock Stars. <laughs> watch that Marvel. Hey, did not watch the Marvels. Watch that new Mark Stars Marvels breakdown though. This shit is stupid. They're, they're setting up the Young Avengers and basically redoing how they did the Avengers with the Young Avengers. And it's a bunch of niggas you don't fucking care about. And now we're theorizing who's going to be in the Young Avengers. And it's like, ah, like I'm not, I don't give a fuck about Hawkeye's daughter. Like, I don't. I, I, I don't. <laughs> Bullseye? Oh, who, shit. <laughs> who the fuck wants to watch Hawkeye's daughter? I don't give a fuck about female Iron Man from Earth 298. I don't. Like, let's go. Let's, 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 let's Thanos snap all this shit. And get back to individual stories that ain't got shit to do with each other. Might be a cute, cute cameo, and that's it. Let's stop having everything tie into a longer, overarching story to gear up for the next big bad movie. Because guess what? Your big bad can punch women, and now you're fucked. Now, now we're talking about, oh yeah, abolish Kang. Let's go with Doctor Doom. So what the fuck was this whole phase about? Now Loki doesn't make sense. Now Ant Man. What the fuck did Ant Man go in the goddamn quantum room for? If he might be fighting Doctor Doom, that made no sense. Let's it's bring it back. Let's bring it. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. Let's bring sorry, it back. Sorry, again. Yeah. I just I, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of what you said, B. but I also think that's a little bit of a different uh, conversation. I I think that there's no problem with. Going back, identifying things that were flops, and then correcting them. Because I think, like in a couple years, you know, some of these some of these electric cars are floppers. Just the the idea and the concept of like electric cars are floppers. So I think in like ten or fifteen years, the phase is gonna pass where it's like, oh my god, this is the hottest thing. You got an electric car, you're a luxury guy. That phase is gonna pass, and then they're gonna get into an era of like, okay, we've kind of mastered um, electric car technology. And now we know how to implement it uh, properly. And hell, you you might even say that right now is them continuing to work on it. Because I remember, I remember electric car technology when it came out in like oh five oh six oh seven or whatever. And those like that shit was not. It wasn't good. I know that sounds crazy, but that shit was not good. I know that shit wasn't. That shit wasn't good. And it was like one of those situations where if if your if your battery died. Um, yeah, replace your replace your whole car. Like it's it's more valuable than your car. It was so big, it was it was too much going on. But um yeah, I, I, I think it's one of those things where it just hey, we now have the technology. I know we jumped a, a little bit out the window and promised 3D back then, but now we can do 3D where you don't have to wear one blue eye and one red eye. So we we can do that now. I don't think I'll ever be pissed. I don't think I'll ever be pissed to the point where I'm like, I don't know, like raging on the internet because again, for a lot of these things, the original IP is right there. Like I'm like, if I really have that much of a problem, I will just watch the original. So hey, keep keep on trying to remaking shit until there is a good attempt. And if it's bad, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a critique it, but ultimately, if if that next Dragon Ball live action remake is ass. I'm gonna just watch Dragon Ball. If it's really that big of a problem, so. No, not the new shit. They nah. over turning Goku back into a kid. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, oh, hey, this shit's cooked. This shit's cooked. I'm not gonna defend it, but I'm not gonna hate on it either. I'm I hate it. The new live action. There's a new Dragon Ball live action. No, 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 not live action. They're coming out with a new Dragon Ball anime. GT Part Two. Is it canon? Is it canon? I don't. Is think it Toriyama writing it? Is Toriyama writing it? I think he's writing it, but oh, I think brother. it's separate. It's That's why Attack on Titan is better, bro. Oh it's niggas, it's niggas is so scared to touch anything Dragon Ball related or Naruto related in any other way. I just, I, it's, it's, the, high, the expectations are too high. But I think they, I just think they'll spin the block one day. They'll spin the block one day. Yeah, Tor- yeah. Can I ask a question? Oh, you talk about live action. Never mind. Keep going. I got a question. It's super unrelated to anime, anything like that. It's a whole different topic. So everybody get what they had to get off? Yeah. All right. Bet, 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 bet. Real quick, and everybody's by their computer, so you can look this up if you absolutely need to, unless you just like a historian and just remember. Just vibes. On Twitter, on Twitter the other day, seen this post. What's the perfect album that came out when you were 16? Oh, shit. And obviously, this nigga's old. So, oh my it's, god, obviously, is that ludicrous? <laughs> <laughs> obviously, this nigga is 
50 years old. No, that is oh my God. crazy. But is that the King album? Oh, man. <laughs> Nigga got Ghostface when he was 16. Oh, my God. Ghostface, Prime but, Rick, and the King. All right, man. But, 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 but. but. Or Jerry Rick Ross. I ain't even going to lie if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna say, is that rookie Rick Ross? Yeah, that's rookie Rick Ross. <laughs> what? What'd that Wimby mean? 20, but... I was thinking, what that 2015? Yeah. Oh, 2015. Wimby? No, let me stop. <laughs> rookie Rick Ross. I'm dead. I'm about to say, y'all look up the years uh, that y'all were 16 and hip hop in that year. I put out mines. My year was stacked. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, 2015, kind of crazy. DS2 to Pimple 2013. I'm 16. To Wimble Wimble Butterfly. Internet, Jesus. Uh, never was the same. What you call it? And Art Scott Paradise is my uh, favorite. One. I say that. He said top four, right? Or just yes. top four. Right. Well, 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 I I did four because he did four. Um, these I'm are just name four. a. I'm just name a couple. Uh, the Life of Pablo okay. came out. Blonde. This is 2016, by the way. Blonde. Anti. Mm -hmm. Anti. Lemonade. Uh, mm -hmm. Star Boy. Awaken My Love. Dangerous Women for my. I'm saying. Uh, 24K Magic by Bruno Mars. Yeah, Stony by Post Malone. That counts. Four Your Eyes Only. <laughs> yeah. Damn, Those, that's what you was bumping? Or that's your shit that came out? That that was shit that came out in 2016. No, what were you bumping, though? Yeah, like, what was, was, what shit was, did it have to come out in 2016? Yeah, when you yeah. were 16. When, when you what, were what came 16. out oh. when you were 16 that you were listening to? Views. I ain't going to lie. Views. Views. <laughs> Anti. Uh, uh -huh. 24K Magic. And mm -hmm. The Life of Pablo. Okay. Coloring book came out that, that year too. Shit, man. All right. So 2015. 2015 is another underrated year because it doesn't get that 16, 17 Uber juice dick suck. But I ain't gonna lie, of all the albums here, I'm looking at right now, and there's probably an album I'm missing. But off the off what I see, definitely tip of butterfly. Mm -hmm. Damn well DS too. Mm -hmm. Um Ah, this is gonna be the most basic list of all motherfucking time. I think it's eternal taken. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get the deep cuts <laughs> now, chat, because I don't have, uh, I don't have all, all of them on my list. Um, a hundred percent. If you're reading this, is too late. Shout out at at long last ASAP. But my answer is Dark Sky Paradise. That I mm -hmm. love that album. I love that. Um, <laughs> Omar, <laughs> yo, yo, what happened? I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> I miss what happened. Um, no, in chat, somebody was like, yeah, when I was 16, <laughs> eternal take. I'm like, eternal take. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came in with a U40 Glock. <laughs> you <Young ass. laughs> um, I got. <laughs> Damn, dude. Oh. Holy shit. Life is never die. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's H -check, H -check, H -check. Hold on. Damn. I got. Uh, right now, chat. I got take here. <laughs> Take Care mm -hmm. came out. Rich Forever, which was a Rick Ross mixtape. Um, the Migos put out a mixtape in 2012. I can't remember what it was, but that's when like Versace came out um, and Bando came right? out. Uh, I, I don't want to say it was the first wiring, but it, it might have been the first wiring. Cruel mm -hmm. Summer and Pluto. Oh, mm -hmm. my bad. I actually wasn't really listening to Cruel Summer like that. Damn, Dreams and Nightmare came out. Finally, Rich came out by Chief Keef. Self Made came out. Oh, um, crazy here. I remember 2012. I remember 2012. That's Joey Badass's 1999. Good Kid, Mad no. City is up there as well. Um, damn, I was it was looking at it right here. Damn, yeah, I forgot. Tony, Self Made you know, came out. I'll oh, be talking about 2016. I'll 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 be talking about 2016. i these days is vocals. Get it in your vocals. If you're this is the reloaded vocals. version. Yeah, Pink Friday. Pink Friday came out that year too, though. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. Reloaded. Reloaded. Oh, no, no. Who said that? Who said that? <laughs> in the chat. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Nigga, you were 16. <laughs> Nigga said I was 12 in 2012. <laughs> Nigga said I was 3 in 2012. Jesus Christ. Damn. What the fuck kind of chat we got going on? <laughs> Go to bed. We, See, we got the we got the chat that count. Then y'all yeah, think that's right that you <laughs> audience, new audience. Y'all talk about Kai got a young audience. Oh Dick. <laughs> Maybe we don't need to do nothing in jail. Right? That's a little crazy. Um, 
Okay, last thing I got before we really get the book out of my day. Three in 2012 is fucking. Three in 2009? Oh my god. Wow. My book was just in Similac. Three in 2012 is crazy. That is wild. <laughs> Um, this one isn't. Are you here? Oh this one God. isn't like a. Uh... Bro, just want to. Nigga, you're 14 now. What the? <laughs> Please, yeah, he needs to go to bed. Yo, nigga can't even qualify. Nigga, dog. I this, n- this nigga's a DQ. That's just say start in 26. <laughs> <laughs> when you're oh my God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. tomorrow, gang. Go to bed. <laughs> Oh um, this is you get your ass in a Target <laughs> back to school sale. Oh, this... oh my! Can they oh, start man. asking questions? Hey, what are you doing? Like she asks for gum. I'm like all right, young ass. <laughs> and that's the audience y'all cultivated, though. So don't don't talk about the people. Y'all, you're in it. <laughs> Us. <laughs> 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 You bullied the old nigga. Yo, who, last uh, are you an old Meezy warrior? <laughs> no, 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 no. Answer that question. Answer nah, that question. Nah, nah, nah. Who's your favorite podcaster on here, man? Who's, who's your here favorite for? host? Yeah, who's your, who's who's your, your favorite host? host? Who's your favorite host? You don't have to answer that, buddy. Let's you don't say me, that. I'm cooked because you know you these say Of course, it's not the Of course, it's not the Well, yeah, hey, hey, and he might be, man. I don't know. I don't know. Um, last thing before we get up out of here, this doesn't even really take. What the fuck? This doesn't take too much commentary. Um, I think this is just this is just Stan culture just gone to another level. Oh, anyway, yeah, Stan culture gone to another level. So this is Aaliyah, um, the fan account. It says, "I was nine when I became a Barb, and now I'm 24 with a son. Seeing Nicki Minaj where she is now is so phenomenal, and I'm so proud of the woman I stand." <laughs> this is where hard work, dedication, and staying true to yourself gets. She is so deserving of everything. I love you, Nikki. So we're going to go backwards here. What? This is her That's and her, her image with her son. He do not want to be there. And this is what I'm assuming is... I thought this was her, is but this, this is... AI? Yeah, it's like this is supposed <laughs> to be <laughs> Nikki. This is supposed to be Nikki <laughs> holding Nikki. her as she became a barb. Like Mona Lisa. Oh my God! Really? I thought that was Nikki and Cardi. No, because she, no, she got a son. She got a son. I think this is supposed to be Nikki holding her when she became a Barb. Oh, this is. The that story. could be oh, wrong. Her? Was going for that little, yeah. You know that picture, that Bible pic. Never mind. I don't even know. I'm just trying to describe. But that, damn, that, that boom, that boom, 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 like, bass ass. Okay. Uh-uh, oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. So it is supposed to be her holding her son. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think it has to be Papa, right? Okay, That's okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Th- that was a little crazy to me. <laughs> New I'm level of crazy <laughs> <laughs> culture. I'm like, wait, hold it. Her? An AI? Oh my God. That's what I thought it was when I first saw it. I was like, nah, they need to start taking people to jail. Yo, you hey, no, nah, yeah, you put yourself as a baby. Nah, you're good. Um, but that's that's gonna do it for us, man. Oh, play 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 the, play the Hawks promo. Chap him, chap him oh ass. my god, they want this so <laughs> bad. They want to see your reaction specifically. I ain't gonna lie. Oh. Uh, where is it? Where is it? I think we got it right. Why you're pulling that up? What the fuck is that T Wolves account? What what the fuck is Yo, that? That T Wolves Brazil account. Whoever runs that, let me look what you dead in your eye. You are a freaky fucking frog. You're a nigga. freaky frog. You're you're a damn menace. You're a freaky wolf. <laughs> you're a beast star. No cap. You're, you're, a, you're a messy monster. Like, what oh the God. fuck is wrong with you, bro? Yeah, what it's not an official fuck? account. It's like a fan page, but there's like a yes. circle of them. Oh my! No, if you check, it's one of those like I paid for Twitter blue type of check marks type shit. Trey got thirty in the first. Got, oh yeah, so. Oh my God! Now mind you, we didn't we didn't want to watch this game on playback. Oh, oh, this is the wrong. Yeah, Whoa. Because- like 17 games tomorrow we can watch. Hold on, hold on. I'm glad that that didn't... Um, matter of fact, let me close this because I'm glad that that did not pop up. It's going to be the I wrong... Get yeah, we're finna be cooked, buddy. Oh, shit, my Rock. brother. Four or five, go crazy, keep dreaming. So is the hawk the bottom? Like, what the fuck? Why didn't he get laid like that? Hot five on five action. 
Oh, I, know, I, know, I thought one of y'all whispered that to be funny. That's actually what they said in there on on the. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, God. that is uh on the Atlanta Hawks official verified gold badge account. Yo, what's going on this year with you freaky ass NBA accounts? What the fuck? I mean, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Shit work. What? what? No, I'm I'm talking about the impressions on the tweet, like. Oh yeah, my lord! I'm yeah. like you're aroused by a hawk. I mean, you freaky nah, fucking hell frog. No, bro. Chill, but I thought uh, the AI pictures was gonna be like the thing this year. No, it's freaky fucking frogs. That's I guess that's the thing. It's kind of crazy. Uh, wait for the Benny Benny the Bull to drop. Yeah, if they didn't know their target audience was like deviants in their basement getting it crazy, spanking the monkey, you know. I ain't gonna lie, Omar. I'm not gonna bring it up any further than this. I know you want us to go out there, but after Keith Lee and now you're a slut, I don't know, man. It's getting bad out there. The city is not what's on Yo, right I now. I didn't know. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. What, the got, what the Wizards got going on right now? Hey, hey, hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. That don't count. Hey, the sections. Hey, hey. I, I, I've been tapped in with the Wizards. Hey, them sections is crazy. Did y'all see that shit? They got Isn't that shit like cheap as fuck? No, it's not. It's it's 26000 a year. Yeah. For the season, wait, what? Or some shit like that. So, all right, so you know how like they got sectionals in the club, like they got like little booths and shit like that in the clubs, right? So mm-hmm. the Wizards have like behind one of the baskets sectionals, and you pay for the whole season for the sectional. And it's like tw- if I'm not if I'm not wrong, it's like twenty six thousand for the season to sit in that sectional for You're the fucking about... Wizards. Uh, a, I mean, a legitimate kind of sofa. A oh, premium luxury. Yeah, yeah, you get a section. Behind like the behind the basket, dog. This is yeah. garbage. I'm looking at it right now. Exactly, it's, yeah. awful. it's awful. It's fucking horrible. For the Wizards, twenty six thousand. Two thousand, yeah. no, twenty six thousand. In a family friendly environment. For it's the Wizards. Even... <laughs> you know what's crazy? I've seen people sitting there, and I've always been like, "How much did that cost?" Now I don't think it's cost what it does right now in the past, but I remember being at that trash Wizards Bobcats game. Sitting there trying to see Karan Butler get 18 points. Like, who the fuck is in there and why? I thought this was some new shit. Has this been going on? I say, I, this uh, no, new- no. They, they've had they've had seats like that in the past. But obviously, mm-hmm. every arena has like guest seats or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. But in terms of that specifically, that might be new. I, the Hawks. I, the I have Hawks heard 26,000 seats. I just didn't the Hawks have it. a version of this too, but it's I mean it's much better than what the fuck I just saw. Damn. This is what it's. it's yeah, like at least that like y'all can play motherfucking uh. What's that? It's a little club right here, and then when I mean, you go like, underneath, yeah, well, the game. is that always that? I sort of got it. I feel like I yeah. see it on TV. Yeah. What the fuck? No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> nah, I no. think that's the whole point. Now with them angles, nah. And then they got a little club underneath as well. I don't know what the fuck I just underneath. saw with the Wizards. The court? Yeah, yeah. When you when you. When you go like behind where that logo was, uh huh. So like if you go in there, you get access to this club right here, and this is like free, uh, not free food, but you know it's all all you can eat food, drinks. You can be there like two. I want to say two hours before the game, and then you can stay there a couple hours after the game too. It's kind of like mm-hmm. if you ever seen like how the Lakers talk about when they made the Forum Club. Mm-hmm. This is their little rendition of it, Char- but it's not. Charlie like, got something yeah. like that too. Char- Charlie got a little something like that too. It's no it's fucking like- couches. I don't know. What? Yeah, it's what? something like that in the Hornets uh, arena. I, I will be attending for the Laker game, and probably I might go that shit for the uh, Clipper game too. No cap. That Whoa. March thirty first, Chad. I ain't forget. Whoa. March thirty first, I will be in the Richie building. Rich. Nah, I'll be in. The, I'll be in the building for the for the Russ game with the my Russ jersey. I might say, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think you realize. No, what's crazy? And I know we're about to wrap up. What's insane? For my birthday, I'm trying to go to the Laker game. Insane how much the prices are for the Lakers compared to the Clippers. Oh, you yeah. would think you would think Russ, PG, Kawhi, Harden, same price. Same price. You would have thought I was going to see the fucking Pistons. Like the price difference is insane. I'm like, LeBron I James. I can see LeBron. courtside. This is wild. no. Apparently, I'm, LeBron's 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 LeBron. LeBron. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Apparently, from my understanding, like no matter who's on the Lakers, <laughs> and for the most part, they've always had good people. But I'm talking about that little stretch where the Lakers were ass. No matter who's on the Lakers. They have. They will never be included in anybody's like season ticket packaging. From oh, yeah, my understanding, still no, no, no. You're right because when it was that era of Lonzo the baby Lakers. and yeah, the baby Lakers. I tried to sneak into, uh, not sneak into a game. I tried to go to a game, and that's back when I was working minimum wage. I was like, oh, well, I can finally see the Lakers. I can afford it. No, you can't. Look, I'm like Xavier Henry tickets. <laughs> Woo! I'm over there. That's back in the days. So I'm like, yo, so you got that seat? Uh, you got that seat promo, right? All right, babe. Let me see if I can get that to work and finesse. Didn't work. 
Yeah, yeah. Hey, we closing in on those coochie chips, by the way. I don't know if y'all seen. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm saying six, coochie six flavor. More I seen that away shit. From eating coochie, coochie flavored, flavored chips. chips. Can we stop eating? Ch- I'm gonna die. Wait, wait, wait. Go like, my, my stomach feeling kind of weird oh after uh, God, these. Yeah, it's been grumbling. That's just my weakness. I, I've seen the video. I've seen the video. Like, I'm traumatized by this video. Oh my god, Dark Bandit with 10 gifted. Hey, y'all get the Gucci chips. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, bro. If y'all can get some flavored chips, nigga, we fighting. I ain't gonna y'all can't, you. Y'all can't keep doing this because then they're gonna be like, oh, here you go being too cool. I'm telling you, that's just my weakness. Eat nasty. Bro, shit. it's one chip. You can't eat bro, one Gucci chip. Nasty, bro. One chip, bro. Oh my god. That's FDA certified? Come on. So dog. this is this is a uh, who <laughs> the F, F is JC. Dick <laughs> chips. He's eating hey, the dog. Hey, you're on a visual from the store back again with another related video. Now this is could be the greatest I do like 200 push ups all time because the people over at Chaz yeah. Chips This could have been a TikTok. Chaz Chips those are the creators YouTube. of the pussy flavored potato chips that I tried Yo, you, you gotta know? stop doing that to people he does this in offline shit too dog every video to give you a little taste of the male anatomy they have thick flavored killer is this time you're not wrong I'm gonna taste I'm gonna yap a bro I don't know guess we'll have to find out why is he so enthusiastic about it I wanna eat dick so bad I know what vagina tastes like. The milkman yeah, with another five gifted. There we go. Place to go. The vagina version. Check it out at this link. You can tell. Come on, buddy. Open the package. Get some dick in your mouth. Why are we looking at dick chips? Why, where the pussy chips at? Wait, wait, wait. I ain't eating no dick chip, bro. <laughs> I got a limit. All right. Sex. Woman yes, stop at coochie chip. <laughs> yes, it stops at coochie chip. The milkman with another gifted. Yes, sir. There we go. Man, the dick. Yeah, there it's it is. There it is. <laughs> nah, I ain't, I ain't doing it. I'm telling it you now. They're just chips. I do not care. <laughs> I, I uh, you are too uh, quick school. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you know what? That's fine. All right, you got me. Is it shaped like a dick? It was like a... Nah, uh, no shot. Uh, nah, it just tastes like. No, it's just a chip. It's just a chip. Yeah, sure. It tastes it like. It tastes right like <laughs> dick, and that's why. We just want another gift in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, it does taste like dick. Yo, <laughs> no, I can't do it. I can't do very it. Salty. <laughs> very, very salty. <laughs> nah, nah. I <laughs> Is that <laughs> blue cheese? It's a barbecue. <laughs> the barbecue and I bad. fucking froze, bro. That's sneaking through. Maybe it's ketchup. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> no, stop. nigga, it's dick. <laughs> Yo, stop, bro. Yeah, like, I'm not going to do this. There's no gaslight alive. There's no gaslight alive. I'm not doing that. That looks like a dick. For... <laughs> that looks like a dick shaped chip. That it's two chips, but yeah. that looks like a dick shaped chip. That nigga Copy. literally sat there, uh, a little sorry. salty, in uh, a hint of barbecue. I think. And there's another taste that I can't, can't put my, can't put my tongue on it. That's what I'm saying, it? bro. Is it, is it ketchup? No, nigga, it's penis. It's yeah, dick no, flavored chips. What Omar the fuck? Bezos, I'm sorry. Sage can't do it. I, I'm gonna eat the coochie chips. you potato get the chips. Dip. I can't do it, man. Mm-mm. I can't do it. <laughs> so the line really does stop at coochie chips. It's, That's interesting. It's, the line stops at coochie <sighs> chips, man. This is insane. I ain't gonna lie, I'm not saying I went sage, but I promise you, I don't need I nor want to know what dick tastes like. I just think they're gonna be in the group chat. Oh, look at sage eating dick nah, chips. No, 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 it's not even. This is why that dick tastes. Bro, Uh-oh. y'all keep, bro, y'all keep yeah, thinking yeah, it's about right, other bro. people all the time. Oh, that's crazy. Y'all keep thinking <laughs> it's about other people all the time, bro. I got my own pride. How about sage don't want to eat dick chips, bro? They're oh, barbecue man. chips. Nah, I ain't gonna hold you. Nah, sage I feel you, sage. I ain't gonna hold you. You try to throw them shits away. Your mom come by, look in the bin. Dick? <laughs> dick chips? <laughs> dick flavored chips? Give me the your phone fuck? right now. This <laughs> is indeed. Get a job. What are you doing? <laughs> you eating dick the chips word, for a living? The word What's of the name is job. J O B. Job. I don't remember, remember that insurance job I said that for you. Come on. <laughs> I don't think through. I don't think anybody has ever pressed. Don't you me have a degree? Anything nah, I've ever done, I know that's that's good. <laughs> hey, invoke Plan B right now. 
<laughs> but they failed. All right, this and he is flopping. Yeah, uh, this is the failure right here. You ain't tell me about this. This was not a part of the plan. <laughs> the five year plan was this. This she called. This she called. This she called pops. Your son is eating dick chips. <laughs> so what anime got... is this, huh, Sage? Huh? Look, look, look. <laughs> at that point, at that point, all you gotta do is tell them, let's go stub for stub right now. Let's oh go stub for stub. And once stub they for and, stub. And, stub for stub. Pay stub, be souls. Pay stub. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought, God. yo, souls. I was with you. I'm like, what? What? I hate you. I thought you were talking about I like. <laughs> did you mean nub? <laughs> I knew what you. Okay, mean. never mind, souls. I wasn't with you. I thought. Like, okay. I thought you were trying to look for the word nub. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Tell them let's go pay stub for pay stub, and then once they see the difference, everybody gonna be wanting to eat dick chips. No cap. Well, hold on, Ma mama probably still got it, but I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, what's that? What's that? Oh no, you gotta. Back. Well, you gotta. You gotta show her. You, you can't show her after the divide. You gotta show them before the divide. Oh. <laughs> if I'm going stuff for stuff with somebody, you think yeah. I'm? You think I'm showing after the divide? That's that's very true. That's very. Book keeper about to look at your books. So, what is this purchase on a uh, November 9th for fifteen dollars? <throat> Dick cheap. Um, Dick I, I I ordered some chips. <laughs> Dick cheese? Okay, so. And it's so hey, cheese. Oh hell. <laughs> yeah, Dick Cheese is crazy. Let let them be so let them ask that question. And I'm gonna tell them. So how is this business related? Let's go pay stuff for pay stuff. Yeah, you, no, asking too many, you you asking too many questions. Let's go pay stuff for pay stuff, Mr. Bookkeeper. Let's do it. I'm I'm winning. I'm coming to go get, get up we with his account. <laughs> so how do we write this off like this? <laughs> yeah, like this, nigga. Right <laughs> off, pussy. Ain't nobody asking for that. They be doing porn stars and all that stuff. Anyway, anyway, we'll get up out of here. Uh, I'm gonna that scream was... right after this. Um, That's gonna be a, funny be a great stream, product. Right? I, I will say like... that that will Dick be a funny stream. <laughs> But stop. <laughs> Dick Cheese is crazy. <laughs> I hope y'all draw the line at Dick Cheese, bro. <laughs> Who going stuff for stuff for me? If, if I had to get 100 subs to eat some Dick Chips and 150 with some cheese on it, some Dick Cheese, guess what I'm doing? Speaking of sub goals, y'all will get a Henny stream next Thursday. So. That's oh, what shit. I'm saying. Let me, let, me, let me see what 150 subs is. Yeah, I'm doing it. Come on. What are we doing? On top of what I already got? Come on. Oh, you just anyway. did math. You're a fucking free. Yeah. <laughs> You're a fucking free. Yeah, that's... My so friend. I, oh my god, you did this. <laughs> Let's go yeah, stuff for stuff. Anyway, cool. uh Damo, say goodbye to the people, man. All right, Chaz, be my favorite midnight snacking. We will be back. Hey man, listen. Um Friday or Saturday, I will be streaming again on Twitch. I think I'm officially uh affiliated. I'm officially an affiliate. Look at this Bruce so, uh, off guy. The, Come on. The the, the the sub shit will be uh, available finally. Finally we'll be able to get subs and everything like that. Uh been a cool journey. Uh, but yeah, can we run it back? Bye, guys. Running back. I, I love the running back. Oh, yeah. And hey, guys, I don't know if y'all seen oh, it or not. Y'all never told the pod? Oh. No one never told the pod how bust souls ass the first game and then edged out the second game because be sold. Yet again. <laughs> They're better than me. What? Damn. Damn. The thank hierarchy you. is set. So. Hey, thank you. I had we to redeem didn't... myself from that Atlanta trip. I ain't going to hold you. That, that, that first Atlanta trip, that shit. It was a nightmare. I, I didn't go to 2KU before the game. It's cool, man. It's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 didn't, we didn't get a chance to talk about it this stream, but I did want to talk about them taking or them taking away the boost that Green Oh, yeah. It's, it's only three now. I'm still... I, I well, still apparently, shot. apparently, they didn't well, do it. They didn't do it. They didn't. They, they didn't. They didn't okay, yeah, say, apparently, it was actually true. But just the concept of it, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me, but... <laughs> Oh yeah, you were pissed when I told you about that no. I was in that stream. Me. I was like, I, 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 it makes sense because technically, like you don't see the bar. That's skill, but at the same time, twenty is od. But I, I shoot either way. No, the know, reason the reason why it doesn't make sense to me is because let's just say the shit is well. Let's just say you hit it three fourths of the way on both on both shots. You on the on the meter shot, you go three fourths of the way up of what it would be, and then on the non meter shot. If there was a meter, you go three fourths of the way up. It's the same exact shot. Why does one get a boost and one doesn't? Because one had one had the ability to look at the ball. The other nigga, yeah, it's the same shot. It shouldn't matter. The other nigga guessing, I guess. He, he's hey, he's playing old two K. Yeah, one got a guy, one good. doesn't. You got it a guy. Should, but but even so I'm a e even if any even in that same vein, cool. If they both are touching the end of the shit, both of them have greens or whatever. You're still less likely to make. 
the the one with the meter than the one without the meter. Why? It's nah, the same you, can, you, can, you can nerf yeah, it a you bit. You have no guide, me, but in it's general, the same no, shot no guide versus guide is. Yeah. yeah, one's a little bit. Right, man. How is I'm one hundred percent with you. Almost, I'm hundred percent with you. It's oh, no, I you don't give a fuck. Let me be clear. I don't. I don't give a fuck. The same shot should have the same part. result. Now I understand if like you you don't have a meter and you are slightly more in the vicinity, then that may make sense. But the same shot should re- should yield the same result. Whether you have your eyes closed, whether you're in the next room, whether you have meter on, no meter on, whether you have that little 70s filter on. If you do the same exact thing, you should have the same exact outcome. I will I say, don't, I don't think it should exist in my career because most people just have a jump shot. So it's either you know it or you don't. But in like five on five settings, it does make it harder when you're using a new team and you do not know motherfuckers jump shots true. and you don't have the meter. But can I, oh. if it's the same shot, it didn't. It shouldn't matter. That's, that's just, that should be the end of it, to be honest with you. I, but hey, go ahead. Can Dominic. I ask you a 2K question no more? Go ahead. So if um, let's just hypothetically, y'all boys want to have fun tonight. You, I am trying. You to join, play. you join a league where you do a fantasy draft. Oh my! You sit. Oh, what are we running a tourney, bro? Yeah. Come on. You God. sit through. You sit through the whole fantasy draft and draft your team. The whole purpose of this league that you draft a team for is to create content. It is a creator league. Would you then not, if there was an opportunity to play another creator in this creator league, would it not make sense for both of y'all to play a league game if y'all going to play each other? Yeah, what's the point of the league? Oh, man. Oh, just, my God. Thank you bro. for proving. Oh. Thank you. I just, I just had people that. People draft it different ways. Some I people think, draft it for the future. Someone had the that. number one oh. overall pick as the commissioner of the league. I'm just saying. I didn't have saying. the number one pick in the last league, and I did it the exact same so way. So, again, so I don't like know. Omar, the reason Chad, why we've been playing play now with Rags is to have a even playing field when you press that star button, not this custom. Not... All right, right. So, cool. so again, cool. Omar asks, what's the point of joining the Creator League if you're not trying to create the content? Hey, so, you should just know. play my team. No, you don't just play my team because we didn't sit there and do a draft of my team in a Creator League on my team. I also well, think I an, even, an even playing field would have been telling me that we were doing it on Hall of Fame, B-Souls, but mm. if you really want to talk about it, if you really want to talk about it. for real. Let's do this sick, bro. <laughs> say, go, say goodbye to the people, man. Just say goodbye to the people, be so. All right. Peace out, y'all. I'm more streaming after this. When are we making this tournament? I ain't gonna lie. We need to do it. To do again? It. Tell. Was, what do you mean again? We've just been playing fucking games. Oh, okay. Just because, to be honest. Say, <laughs> say goodbye to the people, I, man. All right, pe- right, people, man. I actually am hungry, so my goodbye is genuine. Uh, so the guy that was asking my streaming, that depends on my food, and then I'm going to wake up decide, am I watching O Block or am I going live myself? If I go live, I'm just watching Total Drama in real life again. Um, Take care. Stay blessed. Sorry I missed last pod. Had some emergencies, but your boy is okay. That's all that matters. Right. They ducking the smoker now. Anyway, Omar, start, start your stream, bro. I, my stream is started. Bye. I'm guys. just asking for scheduling the game. This is guys.